hands is a problem. But well, I'm saying that the facilities are limited. And for me, elsewhere outside the country is not an issue. But in Nigeria, it's an issue because we have that culture of having to commission new things. And when you come the next year, they are dilapidated. I'm not seeing the dilapidated structure, and I'm not seeing anyone having that sign of dilapidated. So I think there are a lot of things I've seen, but these are the few ones I can just tell you that. Yeah, for us, we want to grow basic education because when you catch them young, you are able to mold them to be the, the, the role model you want them to be at the end of the day. When they miss it at the foundation stage, no matter the technology you deploy, when they are already at the tertiary level, you will only help to moderate the damage you are not able to get the best out of them. So for us as a state government, we are one of the pillars that we want to achieve in our government is to grow the foundation, which is basic education. And while growing the basic education, making it a foundation, we are also making all our institutions, from primary to a higher institution, to be technology based. So even the children from primary school we get to learn through tablets. That is the direction we are already moving. So education for us, beyond just reading and writing, you must also be skilled. And that is why we are reproducing and equipping and building skill-based facilities now, like the Penny Technical College and other technical colleges that we are bringing up. And that will help to shape it our students not only to be worthy in character and learning, but also to be skilled. Your Excellency, sir, I must say congratulations. We are congratulating you because just two years in office as governor, Edo University in Yamo is rated over all third best university in Nigeria on the last OER assessment carried out by the NBC. So what's your take on this? Yeah, that shows pragmatic leadership and shows focus. Shows that the down there management staff know what the vision of the school is and they are going in it from year in, year out. And that is why I, I charge them not to relax on that that they've started. Because this university has a vision from the bond set and that vision must be good. And I'm seeing them growing it already. And also beyond the management staff, the students. The students also have to take advantage of it because not too many universities like this exist in this country. So not only take advantage of the quality of management staff and lecturers that you have, but the quality of facility that we also have here, which is second to none. You go to ABA, that you, you, you some of the facility you get here now, you will be shocked that it is just now ABAD making orders for them. So that means what you can get in Harvard or Oxford, you can get it here. That is the vision. And that means education tourism is returning back to, to this country. And this university is one of those test sitters that every other university wants to learn from. The National University Commission is already sending people here to see what is in Yamu and replicate that in their various universities. So for me, I want to say kudos to the management staff and the students that are also taking advantage of it. Because if the students are not taking advantage of it, by now we'll be hearing negative things. Now we are not hearing that means that we also have dedicated students that are ready to learn, they are ready to be role model. So I, I think I'm excited and we are taught now but with what I'm saying, very soon, the number one is not far from this university. Thank you, thank you, sir. How are your prospects for saying university? Yeah, the prospect is to make it a center of excellence in all ramifications, in all fields. And at the end of the day, we will not be competing at the national level for number one. We will be competing at the global level. Your Excellency, I will say congratulations once again. If Edo University in Yamu 
has gotten to a world-class level in just two years by winning the top overall best university in Nigeria. Where do you see a new university in 10 years time? Competing, like I said, competing among Oxford University. Oxford University, Harvard University, college, that's where it should be competing. For me, those are, uh, you know, there's what they call analog and digital. This is the digital university. So we should compete with digital universities as well, which is a global competition. So I'm seeing in 10 years competing with world class universities. Thank you for coming, so I really appreciate your time. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
Edo University Iyamu has been applauded for its digital transformation initiative that redefines the educational sector in Nigeria. This was made known in its third public lecture on webinar delivered by engineer Martin Manua, President, Federation of African Engineering Organization, on the theme, Digitalization of the African Continent, the Role of African Universities. The guest lecturer also said that engineering a better Africa requires a new paradigm that focuses on building capacity, inspiring youth through diversity and inclusion to join the profession. Universities in Africa, by establishing global engineering education standard for Africa in the International Engineering Alliance, that drives sustainability, facilitating engineering mobility, creating networks like we are doing now, sharing ideas, as well as building engineering capacity for sustainable development. In his welcome address, the Vice Chancellor, Engineer Professor Emmanuel Aloyo, informed the participant that Edo University Eyabo is keen into the digitalization of its academic program through the deployment of digital teaching equipment, which enabled the university to complete the 2019-2020 academic section on Canvas learning management systems. Edo University Yamo is one of the universities in Africa that has advanced digital enhanced instructional learning materials such as the Canvas learning management system. The university through its Canvas learning management system was able to conclude the 2019-2020 academic session. Also speaking at the event, engineer Ali Rabiu President, Council of Registered Engineers of Nigeria, Kore, who also chaired the event, said that technology is imperative to drive development in Africa. His Excellency, Governor Godwin Obaseki, who was represented by the Commissioner for Education, Honorable Jimo Ijeba, said Edo University Iyamo is leading in technological initiatives in Nigeria and the world at large. He also reiterated a do state government support to the university to realize the vision of its founding fathers. It's a wonderful thing that during the period of lockdown, our university for once continued with their letter because of policies put in place by the vice chancellor of the university and his team. And today, talking about digital transformation of Africa, the role of our university. I know that Edo University, being one of the leading universities in Nigeria and the world at large, we take a leading position in this direction. In a goodwill message, the former pro-chancellor of the university, Emeritus Professor T.O.K. Aldo, said that Edo University is a trailblazer in technological innovation and wish the university continued success. Honorable Pascal Obome, one of the participants at the event in its goodwill message, praised the university high standard. The event, which was well attended by parents, staff and students of Edo University Yamo, also had in attendance the Chancellor of the University, Aderebi Makanjuala, as well as Vice Chancellors of other universities and Rectors of Polytechnics. Some staff members of National University Commissions were also in attendance, industry experts, members of Korea, members of the Federation of African Engineering Organization, and media professionals. Edo University Iyamu, a game changer in academics in Nigeria. Edo University Iyamu, located along kilometer 7 Auchi Abuja Road, in the serene environment of Iyamu Ozare in Edo State, was established by the Edo State government and was given recognition by the NUC as the 41st state-owned university in Nigeria in 2016. Owned by the Edo State government, the university is dedicated to finding solutions to critical socio-political and economic challenges and to preparing students for leadership in a dynamic world. The desire of a do state government for quality education is demonstrated in our investment in world-class facilities in the university. This is why the university can boast of modern and advanced technological tools that are not easily available in our country according to the testimonies of different personalities, dignitaries and parents who have visited the university recently. Our goal is to make this university a world-class university 
a global university, a university that can compare with anyone outside of this country. So our benchmark is not Nigeria, it's the world. Um, I want that the next rankings we will see this university being ranked among the best universities on the continent before you know we go into on to the next level. We found that seventy percent of the Ivy League investors use Canvas Learning Management System. Going by global ranking, the ten best universities in the world, six use Canvas Learning Management System. We then decided that if our standards, or if where we want to be, is where those universities are, then we should put Canvas Learning Management System in place for our students. And that's what we have done. Uh, we have taken a, a guided tour around the campus and um, the facilities are impressive and they are world, world uh, class. Our projections are that in the not too distant future, the university will be a reference point for tertiary education in Nigeria. Uh, we just did a tour of uh, the university here and more and uh, we've seen a lot of beautiful things, awesome things. You know, I'm very, very proud to be on a doman today. Uh, I was just discussing with the VC. Now I know why all our courses here are accredited so quickly. You know, I've been to universities both in Nigeria and abroad. I'm happy to tell you that what, I, what I've seen here today is the best I've ever seen. And uh, I'm highly impressed. I want Which is globally acknowledged as the fastest growing LMS with more than 80 million users. Hence, Mr. Vice Chancellor, you and your management have blazed the trail by this singular act. With the increased presence of the new university on the World Wide Web, the state is set for improved ranking of the university on national and global meetings. We are now well ranked nationally. With the use of LMS, you will have additional leverage in global ranking schemes. New university without doubt, but it's a new university with great. Um, a great potential, but beyond the potential, it's a un university that has great ideas. It's easy to say that it's a young university, but it is taking on the kind of responsibility that even the older investors are not able to. We're using simulation technology to train students for achieving the competencies required. Which a Dose University is well suited, well equipped both with facilities and human beings to train engineers. I have to be totally honest, I've been to a few universities in Nigeria, but this has got to be the most modern university. At the size scale of the universities, it's very, very big. The facilities are fantastic and beautiful football pitch. Welcome to Edo University, Iyamo. History was made on the 23rd of March 2016 in the educational sector of Edo State as the National Universities Commission, NUC, approved the establishment of Edo University, Iyamo. By this approval, Edo University, Iyamo, becomes the 41st state university and 142nd university in Nigeria. Edo University, Iyamo, otherwise known as EUI, was ranked third best in Open Educational Resources 2018, organized by the National Universities Commission, NUC. The university is among the few in Africa that has an atomic table and fully deployed Canvas LMS for effective online teaching and learning. During the lockdown, the university deployed the e-learning platform for successful completion of the 2019-2020 academic session. The university has become African Toast with its collaboration with Association of African Universities for several online training for university lecturers and researchers. Let's take a look. This is the administrative building of the university. This is Muhammadu Buhari Science Building. You are welcome.
to engineering faculty and its workshops. Here is farmer's building. These are medical laboratories. This is law faculty. Here is the university library. Here in EUI, we have temperature controlled classrooms with multimedia facilities. This is the university main auditorium. You are welcome to Students' Hall of Residence. This is our football pitch. I hope you like what you have seen. Thank you for being our visual visitor. Very distinguished ladies and gentlemen, we'd like to make you welcome to today's event at the Edo State University of Zairwe, formerly known as Edo University, Iyamu. Today we are gathered to hear the lecture, the fifth in the series, in the Founders Day lecture series of this university. University. We are particularly grateful to God that this beautiful day has sprung on us, not like a surprise, but as a joy that we are part and parcel of the life of this university, the life of our environment, the life of our country, and indeed the life of the world. This morning across the globe, whether in the Americas, in the Asia, in the Pacific, in Africa, people are logged into this event. This is a webinar Zoom lecture, which will be given by a very distinguished African, an African who is the toast of several generations an African who speaks from the embers of his boys, an African who is very captivating, one man whom everybody would like to have in his home. We also have today present with us a distinguished jurist, a man of several parts. He will be chairing this occasion we will do formal recognitions in the course of this event. But this is to make you welcome and to say that up until this moment, we have been taking tours of the university virtually. We have shown you a couple of things that are going on at the Edo State University of Zaire, and we will take you through many more in the course of the interlude for this event. At this point, let me invite us to watch a brief event, but that will be after we have done the done honor to our country land, Nigeria, and to our university, the Edo State University. It is my privilege, therefore, to invite all of us to please be upstanding 
as we take the national anthem. Chancellor, with your kind permission, I'd like to do a quick recognition of some of the dignitaries that have logged into this program so that they know that we recognize that they are here and that we salute their time and efforts for joining us at this fifth Founders Day lecture series. We want to make welcome, particularly the guest lecturer who is far away from here, but as Mark, Marshall McLuhan says, the world is a global village. So we are all in the same village, in spite of its globalness. We'd like to make welcome Professor P. L. O. Lumumba, our guest lecturer for today. Welcome to this event, sir. We like to make welcome also our immediate past chairman of council, Professor Emeritus T.O.K. Audu, who has been with us for the past one hour and will continue to be with us. Thank you, Prof, for joining us. We like to welcome also the registrar of the Nursing and Midwifery Council of Nigeria. Laj Farouk Abubakar, please welcome to this ceremony. We'd like to also
Vice Chancellor of our university, um, Professor S. M. Amodia. You welcome also to the event. We will take further recognition. We take further recognitions as the event continues, but let me make welcome in an special manner the man who is chairing this event today, the man whose level of knowledge has not only catapulted him to the Supreme Court, but a man whose service is recognized both in Nigeria and beyond Nigeria. Please join me in making welcome the chairman of today's event, Honorable Justice Samuel Kudmini JSC to this event. You welcome uh, my lord. I haven't said this, we will take more recognition because of the ceremony, but let's move very quickly to doing part of the business for which we are here. It is on this note, therefore, ladies and gentlemen, that I'd like to ask the chief steward, the chief servant of this university, the very short and amiable vice chancellor, engineer professor E.O. Aluyo, to please give his opening remarks. Vice Chancellor, sir. His Excellency, Mr. Godwin Nogagasha Obaseki, the Executive Governor of Edo State, and visitor to the university. Dr. Adiremi Makanjola, Chancellor, Edo State University, Uzairi. The Honorable Justice Samuel Chukudumebi Oseji, Justice of the Supreme Court of Nigeria and chairman of today's occasion, Professor PLO Lumumba, advocate of the High Court of Kenya and Tangaika, and guest speaker of today's event. This is Stella Maris Imasu, and Permanent Secretary, Ministry of Education, the principal officers of Edo State University, Uzari, members of Senate, vice chancellors and rectors, registrars, bosses, and librarians of sister tertiary institutions, my law spiritual and temporal, staff and students of Edo State University, Uzari, distinguished guests and invitees, gentlemen of the press, ladies and gentlemen. It is a great job that I welcome you all to the fifth Founders Day lecture of Edo State University, Uzari. I welcome especially our dynamic governor and visitor to the university, Your Excellency Godwin Nogagase Obaseki. I sincerely welcome and thank Honorable Justice Samuel Chukudumebi Oseji, GSC, for agreeing to chair this occasion of the fifth Founders Day lecture. I want to specially appreciate our lecturer for this fifth Founders Day lecture, Professor PLO Lumumba, for accepting to deliver this fifth Founders Day lecture titled Modern Economic Slavery of African States. I'm confident that by the end of this lecture, the audience will be more enlightened on the economic policies of African states and the way to improve on them. Ladies and gentlemen, Your Excellency and visitor to the university, please permit me to thank you for your continuous support to Edo State University, Uzari, which has snowballed into landmark achievements in five years of existence of the university. Sir, I must say that besides achievements being recorded in teaching and research through the deployment of the Canvas Learning Management System, Open Educational Resources, 
enhance technological teaching through skills laboratories, power lab, and the use of anatomage, among others. The university has continued to contribute her quota to national development through the Founders Day Lecture Series. For instance, the focus of the fourth Founders Day was on national security with the presentation of the then chief of the air staff, Air Marshal Sadiq Abubakar. In keeping with the tradition of the university, this year's Founders Day focuses on the, on the economic advancement of African states. To be able to effectively achieve the purpose, we are elated, elated to have Professor P. L. O. Lumumba as our guest lecturer. The choice of Professor P. L. O. Lumumba is based on his extensive contribution to the cause of Africans and African states taking their pride of place in the Committee of States. Your Excellency, sir, please permit me to also state that academically, Edo State University is distinguishing herself in the aspect of teaching, research, and community service. As a matter of fact, the university operates fully approved and accredited programs with a minimum accreditation score of 82.1% to date. The recent achievement in the aspect of accreditation is the full accreditation status granted the university to run the public health nursing science program by the West African Health Examination Board, WAHEP. By implication, nursing science graduates from Edo State University of Zare will have the public health nursing certificate along with the regular registered nurse certificate. Also worthy of mention is the approval granted the university to run postgraduate programs i.e. diplomas, masters, and doctors of philosophy in economics, history, international studies, and political science. Others include biochemistry, computer science, and microbiology, and the postgraduate diploma and masters in accounting by the National Universities Commission. These programs are scheduled to take off with sessional academic activities on the 9th of April, 2021. Once again, I want to specially appreciate His Excellency, Mr. Godwin Nogegase Obaseki, the Executive Governor of Edo State, for the support given to the university management to succeed. The Chancellor, the Chairman of this occasion, the guest speaker for honoring our invitation despite our short notice. I sincerely thank you all for honoring our invitation to be part of this auspicious ceremony of the fifth Founders Day Lecture of Edo State University Desiree. You are all welcome. Thank you. Can we please applaud our Vice Chancellor for that brilliant speech? Um, that done, I think the tone for today's event has been set, and we are ready to begin to consume the very rich menu that has been prepared for this event. But before then, we will take a guided virtual tour of the university as an interview, and after which we will come to the address by the chairman of this event. So may we have a virtual tour of the university so that our chairman can begin to get ready. Thank you. Welcome to Edo State University Ozare, formerly known as Edo University Iyamo. History was made on March 23, 2016, in the educational sector of Edo State, as the National Universities Commission (NUC) approved the establishment of this university. Since the establishment of this university in 2016, the university has made landmark achievements in various areas. The first in West African sub-region to acquire anatomy table, a 3G medical tool that aid in the study of human anatomy. The university also has well-equipped laboratories for teaching and research with state-of-the-art equipment such as thermocycla, eye performance liquid chromatography, atomic absorption spectrophotometer, 3 CG mannequins. 
facial processor among others. You will know more about our facilities as we visit Provost College of Medical Sciences and deans of various faculties. Here we are in the office of the Provost College We apologize for that little hitch. We'll be back on course in a short while. Thank you. In this era of technology, several things militate against us, but we are certainly going to be on top and this temporary hold on the virtual tour will be resolved in a moment. We ask you to please stay tuned, stay logged on so that you can be part of the tour that is ongoing. Thank you for your patience. Thank you the, for your understanding. No Lucy. Thank you for the courage. Clinicals to join us. Clinicals. In our program, we use the most technologically advanced method. Is uh, is the curriculum. This curriculum starts integration of teaching and skill acquisition right from level two hundred. When the students, when I started, two hundred levels. This curriculum start integrating the basic clinicals and thereafter the clinicals. In our program, we use the most technologically advanced method of learning, which is internationally accepted. For example, we use the outcome-based method of learning. What is this outcome-based method of learning? We, it is not, we are not just satisfied to go into the class and teach our students. We are more concerned with what the student is able to obtain, the knowledge the student is able to obtain from the lecturer. Uh, well, the uh, Faculty of Law, we took off uh, 2017. In terms of uh, teaching and learning, our students' population are growing steadily, uh, session after session, and that's pointed to the fact that uh, uh, people are beginning to see the uniqueness of the training of new set of lawyers here in Edo University. Here, with the, by the special guest of God and with the present uh, management on board, the recruitment is based on merit. And uh, for information, it will, interest, it will interest you to note that every lecturer in this university, so technologies, has something to offer. And here, we don't hold knowledge. Here, we give the key to the student. We have seven departments. We have very hardworking, dedicated, and brilliant lecturers. The students are very much happy with how they are tutored and lectured. And in the faculty, we excel when it comes to moral uh, education or orientation to our students. The faculty is proud of having staff that have travel abroad and attend conferences, and some of them have won grants. We welcome you to the university. University have top-notch facilities. Um, Anatomy has the very unique teaching aid equipment called the Anatomage. And the laboratories are well fitted with high-tech equipment to make learning and teaching easy. The consultants from these departments cover clinics and that place where our students also benefit from clinical exposure. Of course, training and teaching and research are all part of what we do in the departments. And uh, lecturers and the teachers 
that involve a lot of developmental activities, staff development, conferences, workshops, both locally and internationally. The faculty is well equipped. As you can see, we're in the medical surgical nursing lab of one out of the three laboratories that we have for nursing. We have this general nursing lab. The next laboratory is the maternal and child health care lab. And we also have the public health nursing lab. They are large enough that each of them can take at least 50 students at a time. And we have Kubik where we have our models for demonstration. And we also have various equipments that we use in the training of our students. The programs include the postgraduate diploma, a master's degree in accounting, postgraduate master's degree, master of science and doctor of philosophy in biochemistry, a postgraduate diploma, master of science and doctor of philosophy in computer science, um, postgraduate diploma, master of science, doctor of philosophy in economics, and Doctor of Philosophy in History and International Studies and uh, Postgraduate Diploma Master of Science, Doctor of Philosophy in Microbiology and last but not the least, uh, Master of Science and uh, Doctor of Philosophy in Political Science and Public uh, Administration. So the application form is available on our website so candidates can log in through our website and go straight for uh, to postgraduate admission. Wow, our story does not end here. Let's walk through the administrative building, Muhammad Buhari Administrative Complex. This is how we assess the third and fourth floor of this building. More interesting stories to tell. Wait a minute. This is Aliku Dangote Auditorium. This is our classroom. They are all temperature control classrooms with functional multimedia facilities. We don't have Come with me to the sport arena. This is our Olympic sized football stadium. Now let's hear from our students. Uh, my name is Israel Jagba. I'm a 300 level. I'm a lab science student and uh, I love Edo State University Uzare because the teaching standard here is wonderful. The way the lecturers relate to their students and everything is just so wonderful. My name is Dairo Hassan Fatima, 200 level nursing department. What I like about Edo State University Uzairu is they have good facilities and they have good lecturers and they have a very good, good, good surroundings. I am sure you like what you have seen. Thank you and remain blessed. Welcome to Edo State University Ozare, formerly known as Edo. We have just uh, concluded the brief tour of the university. I acknowledge that there were a few glitches because of network, but we would, um, would get back to that and would enjoy the next segments when we take you on those tours. At this point, let me very respectfully request that the chairman of today's ceremony, the Honorable Justice Samuel Chukudmebi Oseji, Justice of the Supreme Court of Nigeria, um, stand by for one second to give his opening remarks as chairman of this ceremony. It's my honor and privilege, therefore, to invite our chairman, the very distinguished justice of the Supreme Court of Nigeria, Justice Samuel Tugumebi Oseji, to please address this ceremony. The Lord, you have the floor. Thank you very much, uh, Leonard Paul from VC. Uh, Your Excellency, 
the executive governor of Edo State and the visitor of this great university. I'm talking of Mr. Godwin Norgegase Obaseki. I also wish to acknowledge His Excellency, the Deputy Governor of Edo State, Comrade Philip Schreiber. The Honorable Speaker, Edo State House of Assembly, and other distinguished members of Edo State House of Assembly. The resource person of distinguished repute, Professor Pierre Lo Lumumba, the distinguished Vice Chancellor, Edo State University of Zaire. The Chancellor, the Pro Chancellor, and members of the University Governing Council. At this stage, please permit me to adopt the list of protocol already established by the distinguished Vice Chancellor. I want to say that it gives me great pleasure to be part of this program today. And I, as a aside, I must state that uh, just 10 minutes ago, I rose from court here in Abuja, the Supreme Court. We just had some matters, but I just quickly needed with them to give me time that I just have to, of necessity, honor this invitation. It's quite a great privilege to me. At this stage, I want to say special thank you to the Vice Chancellor and his management team for the great stride that they have made in such a short time. We're talking about five years. We have set up a number of faculties introduce series of programs, including medicine and surgery, nursing, medical lab sciences in the College of Medical Science, engineering and law programs, in addition to faculties of arts management and social sciences. Mr. Vice Chancellor, I believe you are such a great asset, not only to Edo State or even Nigeria, in Africa and the world at large. I say thank you very much. I've also been informed that all your programs have been approved and duly accredited by the National Universities Commission and other regulatory bodies, including the Medical and Dental Council of Nigeria, the Nursing and Midwifery Council of Nigeria, Medical Lab Science Council of Nigeria, and even the Council of Legal Education, also included in the Institute of Chartered Accountants of Nigeria, and even the Council for the Regulation of Engineering in Nigeria, talking about current. Also, we will not uh, forget the West African Health Education Board for help. I must say that uh, Edo State University, Uzaira, is famous for the Canvas Learning Management System which is an online teaching and lecture delivery platform. At least I have uh, a word there with you. Uh, it just made me recall during the lockdown, while the whole world was locked down, the State University was quite busy with the students. No time for the students to play truancy, they were just busy. So there was as much no difference between being in the university and being in their various homes. Really thank God for this wonderful innovative venture. Also, thank you very much for all that you have done in terms of recruitment of highly qualified staff as well as table, the stable academic calendar you have introduced that has made the university a full stop. Many others. The university has a modern hostel accommodation. At least I visited there personally to drop my one of my children there. You have standard sporting facilities, serene and conducive learning atmosphere. Apart from the regular academic programs, the university also equips students with entrepreneurship skills and training from year the very first year in the university until graduation. The university which commenced its academic program in the 2015-2016 academic session and had its first set of graduates in 2018-2019 academic session also has partnership with renowned foreign universities 
including Worcester State University, Massachusetts, in the United States, and Sunderland University, United Kingdom, where you have staff and students exchange program. It's quite a noble venture. It is also heartwarming to note that the university now also offers postgraduate degree programs fully approved by the National Universities Commission. I commend the efforts also of the past and present administration for making a state university a reality. And I must confess and assert awesomely that uh, with what is happening now, in the next five years, Edo State University will surely rank among one of the best in the world. And I look forward to being part of that. Once more, I say thank you. God bless you. And may the Lord grant you the grace to continue to persevere with commitment and tenacity of purpose. God bless you once more. And thank you for making me part of the program. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, for that wonderful opening address. Indeed, we feel very privileged at this end of the world that you had to rise about an hour ago from a very serious matter in the Supreme Court to be able to give honor to the world by chairing this event. We are extremely grateful. And as we say in academics, I dropped my tassels of my cap for you, sir. Thank you very much for doing us honor. We like to also take very quick recognitions. We like to recognize the CMD of Edo Specialist Hospital, those who collaborate with us in the training of our medical students, Professor Adioye. We'd like to make you welcome to this event. We'd like to also recognize David Arikayo, KSJ, and welcome him to this event. We want to welcome also um, Alaji Salu Ahmed, the Managing Director of the Benin Owena River Basin Authority. We welcome you to our Founders Day Lecture. We want to also welcome Professor John Igemo Ekimalu, MD of Prime Medical Consultants, one of the biggest hospitals in the south south of Nigeria in Port Harcourt, River State. We'd like to also make you welcome to this event. We want to acknowledge your presence, Dr. Sakinat, all the way from Coladesi University in Ibadan. We are grateful for your presence and we welcome you to this event. Dr. Willie Vito also make you welcome to this event. We will continue to take recognitions as the event unfolds. We have already welcomed the Registrar of the Northern and Middle African Council of Nigeria, Farouk Abubakar. We want to also welcome our former registrar, Dr. Mrs. Sisoke Ogboru, who has also joined from Benin. We thank you for joining and for remaining in touch with your university. At this point, ladies and gentlemen, it will be my singular honor and privilege to do a brief citation on our guest speaker today. Our guest speaker today is Professor P. L. O. Lumumba. He's ordinarily Kenyan, but he's a citizen of the world. So we do not like to locate him in a particular country, or rather locate him in the world space where he truly belongs. It's my honor and privilege, therefore, our guest speaker, our guest lecturer, to kindly ask you to rise 
while we do this very brief citation on you. Chairman of today's event, the Honorable Justice Chukudmebi Oseji, KSC. The Vice Chancellor of our University, Professor Engineer E.O. Aluyo and his management team, and our various distinguished guests who have logged in to this event. I present to you a man of several parts. I present to you a professor of public law, a holder of the LLD Doctor of Laws degree from the University of Nairobi, Professor PLO Lumumba, holds an honors degree in law and a master's degree also in law. He has an honoris, honoris causa degree, Doctor of Letters D. Lit from the University of Cape Coast in Ghana, and also is a proud holder of the doc, degree of Doctor of Science, DSC Honoris Causa from Best Technology in Nigeria. He has been trained on human rights at the Institute of Legal Studies, University of London in England, Humanitarian Law at the Royal Institute of the University of Lund in Sweden and on international humanities in Geneva, Switzerland. He is an advocate of the high courts of Kenya and Tanganyika, and is also a certified mediator. He is a fellow of the Institute of Certified Public Secretaries, a fellow of the Kenyan Institute of Management, FKIM, and an honorary fellow of the Academy of Science, FAAS. He is the chairman of Farafina Investment Group, Liberia, and the Economic Strategic Growth and Development Initiative for Africa, based in Nigeria. Professor Lumumba is the former director and chief executive officer of the Kenya School of Law a former secretary of the Constitution of Kenya Review Commission and a former director of the defunct Kenya Anti-Corruption Commission, KACC, now known as Ethics and Anti-Corruption Commission, EACC. He is a founding trustee of the African Institute for Leaders and Leadership and the founding chairman of the Association of the Citizens Against Corruption, ACAC. He was the founding dean, Kabarak University School of Law, a former lecturer at the University of Nairobi, UNO, UON, I beg your pardon, the United States International University, USIU Africa, and the Wagner University, USA, Nairobi Summer School. Professor P.L.O. Lumumba is a renowned legal practitioner. He has written several books, including Criminal Procedure in Kenya, An Outline of Judicial Review in Kenya, Kenya's Long Search for a Constitution, The Postponed Promise and Judicial Review and Administrative Law. He has published numerous articles in refereed journals and several book chapters. He has also edited several books, including Devolution in Kenya with Professor Mbondei and Dr. Kabao, The Constitution of Kenya, Contemporary Readings with Professor M.K. Mbondei and S.O. Odero. He has co-authored The Constitution of Kenya 2010 an introductory comment with Dr. Louis Franceschi. He has also co-authored several books, 
on ethics. His non-legal books include Swearing by Kenya, A Call for Political Hygiene in Kenya, The Searching Soul, Sanitizing Kenyan Politics, My Africa, which is done in Wahili. He has also done Ango Marachi, Luo, and One Team Ango. He has also co-authored 13 other books on integrity as school series. Professor Lumumba has recently ventured into fiction with his book, The Stolen Moments. In 2004, Lumumba received commendation from the Kenyan Scouts Association for service to the society. In 2011, Bishop Okulu of the College of Theology of Great Lakes University of Kusumu awarded him the order of St. Paul's the Apostle for restoration of good governance and right values in society. In 2012, the East African Association of Anti-Corruption Authorities recognized him for valuable and exemplary contribution and the fight against corruption. Professor Molumba has been named and recognized by the International Commission of Jurists, Kenya Section, and the Law Society of Kenya for its exemplary contributions to the legal profession. He was recognized by the Kenyan USA Association for the Martin Luther King Jr. Leadership Award in 1996 and was also the recipient of the 208 Martin Luther King African Salute to Greatness Award by the Martin Luther King Jr. Africa Foundation. He has also been included in the Marquis Who is Who in the World and is a distinguished Walimo Julius Nyerere Lecturer at the University of Dar es Salaam for 2014. He was the 11th Kwame Nkrumah Lecturer at the University of Cape Coast in Ghana in 2016. On the 27th of May, 2017, he was invested Chief Tamba Taylor of Liberia for his Pan-Africanist activities. He was the fifth Abraham Tiro Ongopotsi Miron Lecturer at the University of Limpopo in South Africa for the year 2017. He was the fifth Apollo Milton Bote lecturer for the year 2017. He was the Nelson Mandela Centenary Memorial Lecturer at Walter Sisulu University in South Africa in 2018. He was the second Referee Memorial Lecturer at the University of Fulanga in 2019. Professor P.L.O. Lumumba was awarded a lifetime achievement for patriotism and advocacy by the African Forum 2017. He was recognized by New African Magazine as one of the 100 most influential Africans in 2017. In January 2018, he received the following awards and recognitions. African Luminary Award by African Cultural Association in the United States of America. Freedom of the City of Lowell in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts in the United States of America for his role in the fight against corruption and bad governance in Africa. Recognition by the House of Representatives of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts in the United States of America for exemplary work in the fight against corruption and bad governance in Africa. Professor P.L.O. Lumumba is currently studied as one of the emerging political voices in Africa. And across the African universities, his thought in political science classes as one of the new icons for the promotion and the establishment of a virile and versatile, unique African identity. Professor 
Columba currently practices law with Lumumba and Lumumba advocates and coordinates activities under the aegis of the PLO Lumumba Foundation. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you this man who is a household word on the social media. I present to you a man who has single-handedly fought corruption from all parts of his body. I present to you a man that is richly and properly desired by the world for a singular act of commitment to promoting a society that is devoid of corruption. It is my privilege and honor and indeed special right at this event of the Field Founders Day Lecture to present to you a gentleman and an officer, an officer of his family, an officer of his country, an officer of his continent, an officer of the world. Please make welcome Professor P. L. O. Lumumba. Thank you. Thank you very much, Professor, for that very elaborate introduction. And let me, before I begin, uh, with the permission of the chair of this session, and before I make any formal remarks, uh, to acknowledge that as we speak, uh, the President of the United Republic of Tanzania, His Excellency John Pombe Magufuli, is yet to be buried, and that we observe a minute silence in his honor, if you permit me. Permitted. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. First, let me say how glad I am and how humbled I am to be invited to share my thoughts with you on the subject, modern economic slavery of African states, the way forward. Before I begin to do so, let me, as you Nigerians would say, stand on the already established protocol. And I think it is wise so that I do not uh, commit any protocol for powers and therefore anger some within the audience. I recognize uh, the men and women who have spoken before me and I acknowledge the beautiful work which the virtual tour of the university has demonstrated. Yet, it also is the opportune time for us to talk about the state of Africa. This continent to which we all belong, this continent which we keep saying decade after decade, year after year, century after century, is great in prospect. This continent which has suffered slavery, this continent which has suffered colonization, this continent that I dare say is going through the many multiple phases of the neo-colonial project. This continent which paradoxically is the richest continent on the face of the earth, and yet ironically is the poorest continent on earth. This continent, which has produced some of the best men and women on earth, and yet on all indices of development, continues to punch below her weight. Many a writer, many a thinker, has spoken or written about the continent and posed the question, what is wrong with the continent that she continues to remain in what permit me to describe as economic, political, and social diapers when other continents have long taken off. The truth is, 
that this continent has great opportunity and that this continent has suffered greatly. But permit me to go into a little history, if only to understand where we came from. And allow me to preface my historical analysis with a statement that was made by Ghana's Kwame Nkrumah in the year 1963 and is recorded in his book, Africa Must Unite. Nkuruma said, and I can't agree with him more, once political independence has been achieved, the country's full potentialities can and must be explored. The domestic economy must be planned to promote the interest of its nationals and new and wider economic links must be created with other countries. Otherwise, the newly independent countries may fall victim of the highly dangerous forces of economic imperialism and find that it was merely substituted one kind of colonialism for another. How true the Osagie for Kwame Nukuruma was. Two years later, before through colonial conspiracy, he was himself removed from power. He said in his book, Neocolonialism, the last stage of imperialism, something in the nature of an economic revolution is required. Our development has been held back for too long by the colonial type economy. We need to reorganize entirely so that each country can specialize in producing the goods crops for which it is best suited. Every time I read those words and I do a mental survey of Africa and assess her state, I ask myself and say to myself, it is indeed true that a prophet has honor except in his own. It is today posthumously that we think that Nukuruma had the foresight of a Jewish prophet. In his lifetime, we thought so not. But let us begin from the beginning. Why do we find ourselves in this economic Mark and Maya? You know, in 1884, the European powers having sojourned in Africa through their agents for a little while and having fought for a little while, discovered that there was no need to fight amongst themselves. They therefore convened in Berlin and the history of the convention is known to all of us and made a solemn vow and decision that they were going to petition the continent of Africa and petition the continent they did. The net effect is that Africa was divided into little countries. Little Belgium became the owner of Congo, which was several hundred times bigger than itself. Little Portugal, occupied Angola and Mozambique and Cabo Verde and Sao Tome and Principe. The Germans came to the West and they occupied Dahomey and part of what is now Cameroon or Ambazonia. They went to Southwest Africa and occupied it and they came to East Africa and took Tanzania or Tanganyika then. The British had their share, the French had their share, the Italians had their share, the Spaniards had their share. Africa was totally dominated. Your own country in Nigeria was in the early days, if you go to the 1914 treaty, was run as a company, not as a country. That is the continent that you have invited me to talk about this morning. When they came, they assumed that we did not exist. In Australia, they used the term terra nullius, a land with nobody. The European arrogance was such that when they saw a mountain in the continent, they said they had discovered it. When they saw a river, 
which existed, they said they had discovered it. When they saw anything, they thought they had discovered it. And they assumed that we who are inhabitants of the oldest continent on earth and the oldest civilizations on earth did not exist. The Berlin allocation was an allocation that was meant to ensure that the European powers were present in the continent of Africa until kingdom come. But that was to be disrupted, particularly because of internal agitation, all of which we know about and one need not belabor the issue. But it was catalyzed a little further when between 1918, 1914, and 1918, the Europeans engaged in a tribal war and see the vocabulary that they use. When the European tribes are fighting amongst themselves, they call them world wars. And again, they fought in 1939 and 1945, and they had another tribal war, which they called the Second World War. At that time, the appetite for Africans to regain their independence had been sharpened. And we know that we fought and regained independence in different ways. Only Ethiopia, which had not been successfully colonized, was spared that. And only Liberia, which had regained her independence in 1847, was spared that. And we will remember so very vividly the meetings that were held in Manchester. And even before that, we'll remember that the appetite for the African was for economic independence. How many of you here will not remember that famous speech of South Africa, Spixley Kaisa Kaseme in 1906 at the University of Columbia, the regeneration of Africa. Even then we were talking about the regeneration of Africa. How many of you here will not remember that famous speech in 1912 of James M. and Kwejir Agri of Ghana, Africa only deserves the best. We remember all those. <clears throat> How many of us will not remember the meeting in 1940s in Manchester in the United States, in the United Kingdom, where African leaders congregated, your own Obafemi Awolowo was there, as was Kenya Jomo Kenyatta, as was Yosage Fukome Nkrumah, as was W.E.B. Dubois, as well as were many others. But it is once again Kwame Nkrumah in 1957 was able to tell us on the day when Ghana regained our independence having been governed at the Gold Coast, he said that the independence of Ghana meant nothing if the rest of Africa was not free. He was able to recognize that the regaining of so-called independence where the markers were a new national anthem and a new flag and black skins occupying offices which were formerly occupied by the colonizers was not sufficient. The white colonizers left, whether they were the French or the British or the Belgians or the Portuguese or any others, they left, but they did not leave. In fact, when they appeared to leave, they were thinking and contriving to control us a little differently. Once again, it was Diosagie for who was able to say, no imperial powers ever granted a colony independence unless the forces were such that no other cause was possible. The very organization with the colony was sufficient to convince the imperial power that the resistance to independence would be impossible or that the political and economic consequences of the colonial war outweighed the advantage of allowing them to regain power. So they thought, but let me tell you, the imperialist is hydra headed. The imperialist has many faces and many masks, which he wears and wears so very effectively. You and me who have had the advantage of education, sometimes we are their unwitting agents because 
When the puppeteer has long prepared the puppet, he need not worry how the puppet will behave. He can predict his every move. That is why when we are lawyers, we are quick to say we are part of the common law system. We do not ask who's common law because we are primed, we are conditioned to think. And I sometimes imagine when they sit in London, England, and they see us bedecked in their robes, arguing in their language, citing their cases, they must say the colonial project was a success. And yet, on that day, the Osage for Kwame Nkrumah and other stalwarts were so very clear that now that we had gained or regained our independence politically, we needed to move a little further and look to economic independence. And that is why his exhortation was, we should neither look east nor west, we should look forward. And I invite you, and I know many of you here being academics and distinguished men and women have had the opportunity of reading the 32 speeches that were delivered in Addis Ababa, Ethiopia between the 23rd and 25th days of May, 1963. It was an inspiration. Every leader, even the ones who became monsters a little later, spoke as if they were possessed by the Holy Spirit on that day. Julius Kambarage Nyerere of Tanzania said, we come here not to remind ourselves of the significance of unity, but to reinforce the fact that if we are disunited, we will never achieve what we have declared we want to achieve. The then prime minister of Central African Republic, David Dako said, I'm happy to be in this assembly because what would I do, I little Central African Republic, if I'm confronted with the resources of the erstwhile economic power France? Everybody spoke inspired, but the most inspired and the most animated and the most impatient speech on that day was once again that of Nkrum. He said, what are we waiting for? What are we waiting in 1776 in Philadelphia, in the United States of America? One of their delegates came and said, we come here not as South Carolinians or South Virginians or any one of those. We are seated here as the United States of America and we come here to perfect the acts of the union. We are one. That is why they say a pluribus unum from many one. We Africans, he said, must come out of here with one currency, with one army, with having decided which is going to be the capital of Africa. He said, I propose to you Bangui in Central Africa or Leopoldville now Kinshasa in the Democratic Republic of Congo, but I invite other ideas because if we don't, the erstwhile colonizers will sow seeds of discord amongst us and our superficial ethnic differences will be so amplified that several years down the line we'll be engaged in fratricidal wars. How prophetic he was when you now look at the state of Africa with war in Cameroon, with Boko Haram in the entire Saharian region, with Al-Shabaab in the Horn of Africa, with the Tigre war with South Sudan, with the Nuba Mountains, with the Blue Mile, with the Darfur, with Libya gone, with Mauritania, with Niger, how prophetic he was. And all these he was saying because he knew that if there is no peace, there is no economic progress. Of course, nothing happened and we created a body that historians and political scientists at once have described as a toothless bulldog, the organization of African unity, which as many of you will remember, became nothing more than an annual jamboree of African leaders, most of whom were discredited. That is where we find ourselves when we talk about our plight as an economic power or as an economic power within the constellation of African, of, of the nations of the world. Kwame Nkrumah told us about the neo-colonial project. Today, even as we claim independence, I doubt. Look at how the colonizer was wise. 
the French created something, the French, even as we speak today, refer to their former colonies as les territoires du Otomer, the foreign territories. If you look at the economies, whether it's of La Côte d'Ivoire or Senegal or Mauritania or Burkina Faso, except for the period when Thomas Ankara was there, or Gabon, or Togo, or Benin, they are controlled from Paris. We who are colonized by the English, we have something called the, the Commonwealth of Nation. Have you ever wondered to yourself, whose Commonwealth, how can it be a Commonwealth of equal nation when the permanent immovable chair of it is the Queen of England, and when she became tired, the presumptive head of it is the Prince of Wales. Yet every year, African heads of state rush to go there to pay homage to the erstwhile colonizer. That is the neo-colonial project. So that the French have the CFA franc, which is still controlled from Paris, although that they are in the Eurozone that you, Nigeria, with a population of 250 million, the United Kingdom, which is a lightweight in many ways, still controls you, and your GDP is possibly 10 times smaller than the GDP of the United Kingdom. And your Naira is not a hard currency. If it's not hard, and there are only two dichotomies, it must be a soft currency, and the sterling is a hard currency. That is where you find yourself. It is you now, we are formally colonized by the English. We are still called, referred to as Anglophone. Nigeria has over 500 dialects, only 20% of whom, and I'm being generous, who speak the English language, and you still are referred to as Anglophone. So is my Kenya. So is my Tanzania. So is my Zambia. So is my Uganda. That is who we are. Our economies are directed from there. France, even when there is a leakage of a major pipe in Dhaka in Senegal, they ask for Paris. The Brussels, the Congolese go to Matonge in Brussels. We produce cocoa in La Côte d'Ivoire in Ghana. And that cocoa is converted into chocolate in little Switzerland, which does not have a single tree of cocoa. We produce diamond in Namibia, in Botswana, and the prices are set in Antwerp, in Belgium, which does not produce a single thing. Nigeria produces oil, but she exports it to Shell BP and other places, and then brings oil refined. I know you are now building a refinery. All beautifully dressed Africans, even those in the assembly that I'm addressing, whether you are here virtually or you are here, you are there physically, I want you to assess yourself and offer 60% of the clothes that you wear are not made in Africa. Your shoes is, in Italy, is made in Italy. The perfume that you are wearing, if it is not made in the United States, is from France. And if the women are wearing wigs, it is wigs that are made in Brazil or in India. Even hair is made elsewhere. That is how we are, which means that that money is going elsewhere. That is the neo-colonial project. And I'm submitting to us that that economic slavery is so deep. And you and me are so mentally captured, even if we do not know it, so mentally captured that our national inclination when we do well is that we want to have an apartment in London, England. If you are sick, you want to be taken to in London, England. Your children will not, even if you are at the Edo State University, you will discover that even those who are listening to me now, you would prefer to go to Harvard and Cambridge and MIT, not Edo State University, no. Not Unilag, not Dar es Salaam, not Czech Ante Diop University in Dhaka in Senegal, not Nelson Holista at Samandela University, Cambridge, Oxford. 
When the thieves in Africa steal money from their countries, they don't keep it in Africa. They keep it in different parts of the world, particularly in the United Kingdom. That is modern economic slavery. And I want to submit to us that the greatest culprits are not the men and women in Anambra, no. They are not the men and women in Luanda, Angola, no. Not the men and women in Nampula, in Mozambique. Not the ones that are in Freetown, in, in Sierra Leone. It is you and me. You and me who have had the benefit of education. You and me who courtesy of education are presiding over institution. You and me who are engineers. You and me who are lawyers and doctors and economists. We are Africa's greatest problem. And the day that we succeed in liberating ourselves, that is the day that the African economy will begin to grow and to grow in a useful manner. But is it the case that we are irredeemable? Is it possible that we cannot be redeemed? No, I do not think so. At the risk of being described as overly optimistic and even romantic, I hold the view that we can redeem ourselves. Even amidst all these, there have always been remnants within Africa who wanted the right thing done. That is how I understand the different efforts that were made when the East African community was being created, the intention of the leaders then, and I remember so very vividly Julius Kambarag and Nyerere of Tanzania saying in 1962, I prefer to delay the independence of Tanzania, Tanganyika, that Tanganyika, Kenya, Uganda will, and, and will become independent as one unit. That is how I understand some of your early leaders like Nam Dia Zikiwe, when during the early organizations, he had a political party that had its footprints in Cameroon. That is how I understand some of the ideas of individuals whom history may not be speaking favorably about now. That is how I understand people like Obafemi Awolowo. That is how I understand even if history may teach you otherwise, the people such as uh, uh, Tafawa Balewa and many others. That is how I understand people like Olusha Gunobasanjo when they had the opportunity. History may be unkind to them, but in their enlightened moments, they always recognize that true liberation will come with economic liberation. And that is how ECOWAS was created. That is how I understand people like Nelson Holisa Samandela. When, when they regained their independence, they talked about the strengthening of SADAC, Central Africa, the Maghreb. That is how I understand African leaders when in 1980 in Lagos, they met and came up with the Lagos plan of action whose raison d'etre was to de-emphasize the linkage between Africa and Europe so that Africa could trade within herself. But remember, that despite the best intention of the best of us, the imperialist never rests. He comes under different guises. He comes under the Commonwealth. He comes under the Bretton Woods institution as if they were going to save our lives. Structural adjustment system, the World Bank, the IMF, but these are all Trojan horses whose main agenda is to ensure that their tentacles are ever present in Africa. So the conceptual West, the United States of America, the new hegemon of the world after the collapse of the Soviet Union made us fight one another as if we were pawns in their political chessboard. And we toyed with several economic models. There were some which were centralized economies, some which were liberal, and you had young men and women coming from different institutions in Europe and America to teach our economies how to run our countries. And the story has been sad throughout. But the question is, is an old question. Beyond the sorrows and lamentations, what do we do? Do we continue to sink in the sea of sorrow and lamentation? Do we continue to remain in the quagmire of lamentation or there is something that we can do about it? In 1983, a young man, an army man, 
not very well educated, some may say not very well exposed, emerged in the heart of Africa in a country then known as Upper Volta, Thomas Noel Isidore Sankara. First of all, he said, why are we called Upper Volta? We can't even name our own countries. He said, let us change the name of this country to Burkina Faso, the land of the upright man, and her citizens should be Burkina Faso, the upright man. History demonstrates that between 1983 and 1987, when they took him out, he had succeeded in, in improving every sector, education, health, infrastructure. It can be done. Mwalimu Julius Kambarage Nyerere, it can be done. Kenneth Kaunda, it can be done. Paul Kagame, it can be done. Yoweri Kaguta Museveni, it can be done. Olusha Gunobasanjo, when he had the opportunity to do so, demonstrated that you could create your own billionaires. It, it can be done. So what is the way forward? The way forward as I see it, is for us to say what those of you who belong to the Catholic faith normally say when you go to your pastors uh, to repent. Mea maxima kalpa, mea kalpa, mea kalpa, mea maxima kalpa. We have sinned and fallen short of the glory of the expectations of Africa. And it's time for us, as my own countryman, Gugi Wathiongo says, it is time for us to decolonize our minds. You know, when in 2013, and I believe that this is one of the ways in which we could do it, when in 2013, African leaders assembled in Addis Ababa, Ethiopia, and came up with Africa Agenda 2063, they said that this is what is now going to rescue us upon seven pillars, the African continent of free trade area rests. And I remember on that day, because I was an adult, the African continental free trade area says that we are going to create a continent and a prosperous African continent, an integrated continent politically united and based on ideals of Pan-Africanism and vision of Africans Renaissance. An Africa of good governance, democracy and respect for human rights and justice and the rule of law. A peaceful and secure Africa an Africa with strong cultural identity, common heritage, shared values and ethics, an Africa whose development is people driven, relying on the potential of African people, especially its women and youth and caring for children. Africa as a strong and united and influential global player and partner. And on that day in Kosaza and Alami Nizuma, from South Africa, who was then the chair of the African Commission, wrote a letter, an imaginary letter to the Osagiefo Kwame Nukuruma, apologizing to the Osagiefo because we had let the Osagiefo down. Today, I believe we are still on course. And I'm saying that the way forward is to give premium to Africa Agenda 2063 so that we do not make the same mistakes that we made with the Lagos Plan of Action of 1908. It is instructive that in the month of January this year, in Accra, Ghana, the, Africa, the African Union established the office of the Africa Continental Free Trade Area, whose agenda is among other things to dissolve the boundaries so that we can have intra-African trade. I believe that if we are faithful to the dictates and the prescriptions of the Africa Continental Free Trade Area, we will begin to liberate our economy. I believe that in order to achieve that, we must also look at the other initiatives that we have taken. We must ensure that we mainstream our women as the Africans agreed under the Maputo Protocol in Mozambique. I believe that we must go to the Malabo Protocol and begin to ensure that we are doing things that are in the best interest of Africa. I believe that we must revive the Yamasukuru Protocol so that the African skies are open, we can move without let and hindrance. I believe that we must go to the Kigali Protocol and begin to ensure that there is a single African passport so that there is free movement of goods and services. It can be done, but merely saying that it can be done is not sufficient. 
I believe, and this is where I think Nigeria has always shortchanged Africa. Nigeria is Africa. The day Nigeria wakes up, Africa will never be the same again. 250 million plus, and I believe you Nigerians are undercounting yourselves. I believe you are nearly 300 million. If you want any of the best men and women anywhere in the world, you go to the United Kingdom. Who are the doctors there? It is Nigerians and Ghanaians and a sprinkling of other Africans. You go to the United States of America, the great man who performed an operation in utero was a Nigerian. In any area that you go in, you find Nigerians. The day that Nigerians make a resolve, that we are going to make Africa great, that is the day that Africa is going to rise again. Today, therefore, as I move to the conclusion of my presentation, I am appealing to you Nigerians, wherever you are, you Nigerians, wake up, because the day you wake up, Africa will never be the same again. You are punching below your weight. You cannot afford to be grouped amongst the lightweights while you are super heavyweight. I am urging Nigeria to come out there with a population of 300 million, you are the natural leaders in that part of the world. Lead in that area. Don't close your boundaries with Togo and Benin. How can you afford to do that? I'm telling the South African, don't be xenophobic. You are the anchor in that part of the world. Rise and make your country, your currency, the RAND, the currency in that area. So we have the Naira and we have the RAND. And the Democratic Republic of Congo, that richest and yet poorest nation on earth with resources estimated conservatively at $34 trillion. How can you be known as the rape capital of the world? Wake up so that you can be great, bigger than Western Europe combined. You can be the anchor there. On the Eastern board, Kenya and Tanzania and uh, Rwanda and Burundi and Ethiopia, let us move in that direction. The Arabs in the North must make a decision whether they are Arabs or they are not. And if whether they are African, because the Arabs, since people like Gamal Abdel Nasser and Ahmed Ben Bella and Habib Bogiba left the scenes, when it is convenient, they are Africans. When it is inconvenient, they are not African. They must make a decision. They are either with us or they are without us. But as for us, they are with us because we can remember the great works of people like Muammar al-Gaddafi. In other words, ladies and gentlemen, I believe that the chips are now on the table. The stars have aligned in our favor. And because they have aligned in our table, wherever you know, on our table, wherever we are, in the academic arena, let us now begin so that a student at the University of Edo is capable of having credit transfers to the University of Limpopo. And the student at the University of Stellenbosch is going to have a stint at Unilag. And a student in Unilag will have an occasion to visit the University of Czech Antidiop in Dhaka, Senegal. And a student in Makerere will go to Dar es Salaam. And those from Dar es Salaam will go to the University of Addis Ababa. Let us play our part. It pains me now when I talk about economic independence. As we speak of COVID now, African countries, complete with African scientists, are waiting for other civilizations to come up with vaccines. What became of our research and development? For 60 years, we have been pre producing pharmacists and other scientists. What happened to them? Why are they frozen at this time? How can little Cuba produce vaccines and the giant Africa cannot? I'm urging us that until the day that we are capable of doing these things, our economic agenda will not be realized. But as I said, it can be realized. And I want to conclude with what Thomas Noel Isidore Sankara said and is recorded in the magazine Cafo African on the 10th day of August in 1984, he said, Africa stands face to face with its problems. Problems the OAU, now AU, always succeeds in avoiding by putting off their solution until tomorrow. That tomorrow is today. We can no longer wait. All these questions must be answered now. So I am saying, that we can solve our economic problems by putting together our resources. Engineers, where are you? 
academics, where are you? Doctors, where are you? Judges, where are you? Research and development, where are you? Teachers, where are you? Business people, where are you? And that is why I believe that we must now say with Julius Kambarag and Nyerere, it can be done. We must say with Ngugiwa Thiongo that we must decolonize our minds. We must say with Kwame Nukuruma that Africa cannot continue to be the doormat of other civilizations. We must say with Samora Moses Marshall that we cannot remain enslaved forever. We must say with Nelson Holisasa Mandela that we have conquered one mountain, the mountain of political freedom. We must now conquer the mountain of economic freedom. We must agree with Pixley Kaisa Kaseme that Africa must be generated. We must agree with James M. and Kwejir Agri that indeed we must only reserve the best for Africa. We must agree with the man whom we are waiting to bury, John Joseph Pombe Magufuli, that we can no longer afford the luxury of depending for our meals on other civilization. And we must agree with Nana Dankwa Kufuado that we must think beyond aid. We must think in a manner that gives us dignity. Africa must run away from what Ali Madrui once said, we cannot be in the business of consuming what we do not produce and producing what we do not consume. Africa can be great, it must be great, but we must move from the drawing board. We must move from the arena of lamentation and we must move from paralyzing ourselves through analysis. We must go out there and put fire under the bottom of the political class who are Africa's curse, that they may do the right thing. There are few who are already doing it. It is our duty. We should stop the blame game. We are equal in guilt. We must all say our mere coppers that Africa may regain her economic independence. God bless you and thank you for listening to me. Thank you very much. Can we please applaud Professor Lumumba once more? <laughs> Chairman of this event, the Honorable Justice Oseji, the Vice Chancellor, very distinguished Nigerians and Africans who have logged in. I am sure that having listened to this brilliant man, this fearless speaker, this man who is a, pan, a true Pan-Africanist, we are convinced beyond any shreds of doubt that indeed we have a great speaker today and that he has spoken to our working this slumber in us to awaken us to the realities of our existence as Africans. He says, true liberation will come with economic liberation. And that economic liberation can only come when we begin to produce what we consume and not consume what we do not produce. We cannot be in the business of consuming what we do not produce we must produce what we consume. He says we must stop the blame game. We must decolonize our minds. It can be done. We cannot remain slaves forever. The imperialist never rests. He comes under different guises, but their main agenda is to ensure that their tentacles are forever planted on our soil. Ladies and gentlemen, Professor P. L. O. Lumumba. You can tell why he's popular amongst the folks of the world. And he has challenged Africa and challenged Nigeria particularly. He says he thinks we are undercounting ourselves. That if we say our population 
is about 200 million. He thinks we are 250 and even more. That's why it says with a population of over 300 million people, we cannot afford to fail Africa. We cannot afford to fail ourselves. We cannot afford not to take the lead. And to take the lead means that we must take the mantle as it comes to us and frontally take the lead so that the rest of Africa can follow us. Ladies and gentlemen, this lecture is streaming live and it's on YouTube. And those who have not had the privilege can uh, log onto their YouTube channels and will find the full brief. We'd like to thank our guest lecturer again, because looking at my scroll bar, the comments I see make me weak. Oh, I weep for Africa. Oh, Africa is really dead. Oh, Africa is this. Challenge yourselves today that we can do it. And we is not just a royal we, it is all of us, you and I together, agreeing that will change the narrative and the narrative will truly be changed. I want to thank Professor Olumba Lumumba for this great job that he has done. And while standing on that premise of thanking Professor Lumumba, we want to quickly recognize a few persons who have joined us in the course of the lecture. We want to recognize Professor Patrick Abunilo, Mechanical Engineering Department, University of Benin. We want to recognize Professor Saidu Hosseini, Faculty of Agriculture, University of Ibadan. We want to welcome also the Vice Chancellor of the University of Maiduguri, who has also joined us. We'd like to recognize in a special manner, Mr. Anthony Okuboa, the Head of Service of Edo State. Um, he is of course joined by the Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Education, Mrs. Stella Maris Emaswen. We want to also welcome Professor Adam Okene, the Director of Linkages and Collaborations, Nigerian Defense Academy. We want to make welcome Honorable Pascal Obome, who has also joined us. We want to welcome Honorable Johnny Oguma, member of the House of Representatives, who has also joined us. We want to recognize also the acting rector of the Federal Polytechnic, Auchi, Auchi Engineer M. A. Zubai. Thank you for logging in. We welcome our uh, brother Vice Chancellor from the Ambrosali University, Ekoma, Professor Ignatius Onimawo, who has also joined us. We want to welcome also in a special manner, the Secretary General of the Committee of Vice Chancellors of Nigeria, Professor Yakubu Ochefu. We'd like to also welcome Professor Said Oyarekwa Oseni, Director, University Research of Bafemi Agulawa University. We want to welcome Mr. S.F. Akinkbelu, the acting bursar of the Samuel Adeboyoga University, Ogwa. We want to welcome also the Vice Chancellor, Benson Idawosa University, Benin City. We want to welcome Dr. Lawrence Edemaru of the Biochemistry Unit, Samuel Adeboyoga University, Ogwa, Edo State. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for logging into our channel. Please stay with us. We have many more things coming your way. Having done this, it will be inauspicious and unpardonable crime that we cannot forgive ourselves if we do not allow members of the audience to ask a few questions to which Professor Lumumba will provide answers. And in doing this, you would indicate by electronically raising your hand and we will recognize you and ask you to speak. So the floor is open now for questions and answers. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen.
Sí, sí, por ahí. Um, Dr. Tunde Alabi, we have you. Dr. Sekinat Kola Aderoju from Kola Daisy University, Ibadan. And Baba Jibril El Yakubu, we can see your hands up. May we take Dr. Tunde Alabi, please? May I ask the guest lecturer to kindly note the questions so that he can respond at once to all the questions that will be asked. Thank you. All right. Thank you, sirs. Um, it's been a great honor to be part of this uh, occasion, and I thank uh, Professor Lumumba. The question that I want to ask is more of a personal question. I want to know if there is a connection between Professor Lumumba and uh, the, the late uh, African leader, um, Patrick Lumumba. And uh, if uh, Professor Lumumba has at any time been influenced or inspired by the life and the activities of Patrick Lumumba. Thank you. Thank you. He will note your questions and react at the appropriate time. Can we have um, Dr. Sekinat from Colorado University? Thank you. I'm afraid we can't hear you, Dr. Sakinat. Um, well, can we take Professor Baba Jibril, please? Professor Baba Jibril. Professor Baba Jibril, are you there? If it's not ready, we can take Dr. Chris, okay. Dr. Chris, okay. Okay, um, thank you very much. Um, I want to thank uh, in a special way, Professor Lumumba, indeed, you have displayed that you are a colossus in Africa. My question, very shortly, is this. Um, you mentioned the Yamasukuru protocol. You also advocated for free movement of people within and around Africa. Now, very recently, Nigeria implemented a policy they called uh, visa on arrival. Before that policy, we had pockets of crisis, pockets of um, um, insurgencies in at least in northern part of Nigeria. But it was not on a cataclysmic basis. Immediately that policy was implemented or announced that opened our porous borders to different kinds of people, including renegade soldiers who were running away from uh, Libya. Soldiers, soldiers who were running away from Sudan, Southern Sudan, uh, 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 the Northern part of Mali, all of them found their, their roots and base in Nigeria. Shortly after that, you can see the level of insurgent activities. I don't know, you, you can see the level of banditry, the level of kidnappings on a very large scale going on in Africa. If we allow free movement of people on the scale you have advocated, 
what will be the fate of such ethnically and religiously tensed countries like Nigeria. Let's not make mistakes here, sir. Nigeria is not Europe. We are not yet there. Africa is not Europe. We are not yet there. So, but- Please round up, round up. Can we take Iluegbam Sunday? Iluegbam Sunday. Hello. I wish to uh, appreciate Professor for his very erudite lecture. It's quite illuminating. Um, and uh, clearly, he has tied um, the economic freedom of Africa to be the major problem why we are going around in circles. But I think closely linked to this economic challenge we're having in Africa is the leadership challenge. So I want the erudite scholar to give us his own opinion how we can solve this leadership challenge. Because I think if we can get the leadership right in Africa, the leadership right in Africa, the issue of economic emancipation of Africa. Thank you. So, thank you. Thank you. Please just make your question brief so that the lecturer can respond. Thank you. Dr. Naga, are you ready? Um, as you can see, most youths in our country, Nigeria, though, their first instinct is like to travel abroad. And uh, why those in Nigeria, when they get into leadership position, their first thing is how they can take money for themselves. So I want to know, like, um, I want the speaker to address us, like, let us know how the older generation can prepare the younger ones or the youth for to actualize the Africa of our dreams. Thank you. Thank you. We'll take uh, Abulime and Hizoli. Abulime and Hizoli. Okay. Yes, um, I want to thank uh, the speaker for the, for the lecture, it was actually wonderful. But I also want him to address a certain part, which I think it's part of uh, the leadership problem in Africa. Um, he talked about economic liberation, but I think economic liberation cannot be achieved if leadership at all levels cannot be sincere enough. Now, I want to cite an example. In Africa, our former dress code, like, like as an example, is the suit and the tie that most of our participants are putting on. How can we actually achieve economic liberation if we do not indigenize our own activities by wearing akara as our, our, our specific way of dressing and modernizing our way of doing things in an African way than using the system that we have borrowed from the Westerners that are not working for us in, in the process, helping to enrich their pockets and enrich them economically and depress us. So that's my question, sir. Thank you. Thank you. We'll take Mr. Antonio Kumbawa, head of service, to ask his question. Hello, thank you uh, very much, Prof. I hope you can hear me. Thank you. Let me sincerely appreciate um, Professor Lumumba. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, I've, um, for me, this, this is a big, big honor to uh, listen to you speak directly. I had had the opportunity of um, listening to excerpts of your speeches uh, a different fora, but I've never had this kind of opportunity listening to you directly. Uh, for me, I, I am blessed. I am 
blessed this uh, this afternoon. A small question. Uh, somebody talked about uh, the different. Of course, you also know the economy is virtually comatose for most African countries. Um, I, they say a journey of a thousand kilometers begins with a step. So, what what firm step do you think we should take as Africans? You know, towards um, uniting Africa. What what first step do you think we should take? You know, like they say, you know, the first uh, cut is usually the deepest. So if it is well done, uh, it will go a long way in ensuring that uh, you know we, we get what we want in terms of African unity uh, in Africa. So what do you think we should do as a first step, especially for our generation of Africans, this generation of Africans, this generation of Nigerians? What exactly should we do? What are the steps you think we should take uh, for your beautiful very afternoon? Thank okay. you, Mr. Kumbawa. Please, while you are waiting to hear the response to your question, you would also give a remark at the end of the event. So please don't log out yet. May we have Abraham ask your questions? Abraham, thank you. Yes, uh, thank you for the opportunity to ask this question. Uh, I will go straight to the question. How would our elder uh, scholar address the issues of vulnerabilities. If you hear names like Nkrumah, Lumumba, Sankara, and of late, uh, Magufuli of Tanzania, what is common to all these people are that they are the leading lights in Africa. There are those who are really trying to say, we can make it. Another thing common to all of them is that they are no more with us. What is it about those who are smart amongst us that makes us vulnerable to being removed before the, full, the fullness of time? I will be very glad if our prof can um, shed some light on, on, on that. Thank you very, 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 very much. Thank, thank you very much. Let's take Mr. Peter Imokweme, and then it will be done. Mr. Peter Imokweme, thank you. Thank you so very much, Prof. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. I want to say thank you, Professor Lumumba. That was an eloquent. Um... We can't hear you anymore. I think, Professor, I lost you there. I don't know whether you are invited. Our school, vis a vis. We lost you there. Uh, you want Nathaniel to ask his question before I come in? Yes, let me quickly ask the question. Yeah. Thank you so much, Prof, for your presentation. My question is this I want Please Nathaniel to ask his question before you take over. Yes. Yeah, he's on already. My question is this. In spite of very many Pan-African initiatives, including the activities of the African Union to foster unity in Africa and promote harmony and development, what do you think the African Union has likely done to ensure this and what do you think should be done to further the force of Pan Africanism, which has always been the focus of African scholars and leaders right from pre colonial, colonial, and post independence eras? Thank you. Thank you. Uh, th th thank you very much, Professor. I want to share my ideas in response to the questions raised with a caveat. 
a caveat that these are my thoughts, which I would myself be happy to be enriched by the different perspectives. So that is not as if I am, uh, I have the monopoly of knowledge and wisdom and, 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 and you are imbibing from my knowledge and wisdom. These are purely my perspectives and you may find fault with them and, and then enrich them cross fertilization, cross pollination kind of thing. Let me start with the last question by Nathaniel. One of the most amazing things about Africa from where I sit is that we have always been able to, to diagnose our problem. <laughs> if right from the beginning in 1963, it's not as if we do not know the problem. You, you see it in the 1900s, you see it in the 60s, you see it in the 70s, you see in the 80s with the Lagos Plan of Action, you see it with Africa Agenda 2063, you see it with the Lomé Convention, the Cotonou Agreement, and a series of other Pan-African and regional agreements. Our problem comes with implementation. I give you an example that has just happened in my country, Kenya. The East African community takes the view that we should not enter into bilateral arrangements unilaterally because we are going to be undermined. What happens? The United Kingdom approaches Kenya. We have now entered into a bilateral trade agreement for 25 years. The other countries are not involved. The United States of America does so. The America comes in with a goal. So our vulnerability has always been that we, was, we are susceptible to manipulation. And I think the conceptual West knows that. And the Chinese increasingly know that. The Chinese will come with what is visible for the politician. Your typical African politician wants to do things which the electorate can see. So a stadium there, uh, uh, some road there, which is overpriced, something that people can see. And, and because of that, because our politicians are not statesmen, most of them, if somebody would define a politician as somebody who thinks of the next election as opposed to a statesman who thinks of the next generation. So if I, 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 I look at that definition as defining what I'm going to say uh, as I answer the question, we have too many politicians in Africa and very few statesmen. And I think that that is where we have a problem. So AU, OAU means well, then we discover in the year 2000, we change it to AU. We come with, with NEPAD and we know new opportunity for African development. NEPAD does what it wants. We have now called it NEPAD AUDA under the African Union. So diagnosis is not our problem. Our problem is implementation. Two, we don't finance our activities. Right now, if you go to the African Union, perhaps anything between 60 and 70% is externally financed by the French, by the Chinese, or somebody else. And if that happens, it means that our priorities are not the priorities that we would want. And you would see that even with the regional bodies. If you go to ECOWAS, you'll find, for example, that if Nigeria and Ghana or Senegal and La Côte d'Ivoire don't make their payment, then the organization grinds to a halt. You do see that in SADAC. And I think, therefore, that one of the things that we must do is to put a stop to going through these protocols and ask ourselves, what have we done in terms of implementation of the processes that we are involved in? And I think it can be done. Dr. Kinwumi Adeshina, who is your countryman, when they wanted to remove him, why did they want Akinumi Adeshina to go? Because Akinumi had recognized that one of the things we must focus on is agriculture. We import something in the neighborhood of 35 billion of agricultural products. These are the areas that I would want to see the AU focusing on. CDC, the Center for Disease Control. Look at the money that African countries are going to pay through COVID vaccinations. Look at the money that we are paid through importation of masks. Look at the money that we are paying through importation of PPEs and other related medical equipment and other things. It means that the little money we have is being hemorrhaged back into Europe, the United States of America, and in China, and is going to be with us for a long time. In the next few months, you and me who will be traveling will be required to have possibly a, a travel certificate like yellow fever, and we are going to pay money in the millions, and none of that is going to get into Africa. 
So Nathaniel, I, I think that Africa should now go into what I call the implementation phase. The next question is by Abraham about vulnerabilities. You know, it is, uh, if you read the book by Amilka Cabral of Guinea-Bissau, Amilka Cabral said, in, not in so many words, that the problem with African leaders is that they emerge and shine like pink poodles and they are easy to identify. Occasionally it is uh, Nkrumah, it is Sankara, it is Lumumba, it is Magufuli, and then they identify them. And within our ranks, they are fifth columnists. There is a book that I commend to you, the assassination of Patrice Lumumba by Ludo de Vet. And it's quite clear that the Americans and the British were involved, but who did they use? Moise Shombi and Mobutu Sesaseko. So we have within our ranks people who are easy to entice with a building in Dubai, with an apartment in Paris, with something in Illinois, and then they are prepared to sell their countries. And that is why when these things are done under the aegis of the United, uh, under the aegis of the African Union, then there is not a single individual who is identified, but there is an army of good men and women. And how many will you take out? So, and, and this is what Nkrumah was saying. Let us be many of us, let us be in the forefront so that there is such a huge army that it does not matter who you take out because they, they use the normal thing strike the shepherd and the sheep will scatter. Fell the Iroko tree and the blood, the birds have nowhere to, to, to perch. So we must have so many Irokos that even when you fell one, the, 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 the birds will still find somewhere to, to perch. Anthony then asked me a very pointed question. What is that initial step? What is it? And I must say that that initial step cannot be an initial step in that way. It, if I say there is a single initial step in that standalone way, I would be too simplistic. But I would say that one of the few things that we should try to do is have common markets. Because if you look at the West African region, for example, look at the border trade, whether you stop it or not, the border between Nigeria and Cameroon, people are going to trade. The border between Nigeria and Niger, the border between Sierra Leone and Liberia, formalized trade. Once you begin to formalize trade, you will discover that it leads and feeds into other things. So to me, common markets and having common policies on, on, on trade is one of the game changers. And once you do that, then you can go into other areas such as common currency. The problem, of course, is that we have now gotten used to our sovereignties. The politicians have gotten so used to 21 gun salutes and the packs that go with them, so that when you tell them to dissolve these boundaries and have the governments uh, disappear, then they think that that will make them less a person. That is part of the problem. Little things, somebody is head of state of a little country, which is the, perhaps the size of Abuja, and he too wants 21 gun salutes and a national anthem, and, and, and he stands in the way of very major things. So the single thing, let us de deal with the economy. If you look at the, the East African Community Treaty, it says we start with a common market, then a single currency, then ultimately a political union. And I think that that is the order and it can be done regionally. ECOWAS can do it. And I was very happy when ECOWAS had started thinking about the eco before the French hijacked it with La Côte d'Ivoire. I was very happy in East Africa when we were working towards a common currency in SADA, in Central Africa. So that economic thing, I think is, is, is very critical. On the question of political leadership, if you read Chinua Achebe's little book, The Trouble with Nigeria, written in 1983, and it could very well be with the trouble with Africa. He says that the problem of Africa, of Nigeria, and I'm saying Africa, is simply and squarely a problem of leadership. And leadership at the political level. Because leadership at the political level does affect leadership at all levels. The vice chancellors who are here, the heads of the judiciary who are here, the heads of all significant areas who are here, those of you who are captains of industry, when you have bad politics, 
it poisons the entire environment. And that is why political environment is the game changer and is a political problem. But Africa has also demonstrated that once you have good leaders, and they have been there, few and far between, you, many things can be said about the administration of, uh, of people like Ian Kama uh, the admin in, 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 uh, in Botswana. Many things can be said about Hagegen Gob in Namibia. Many things can be said about Nana Dankwa Kufuado. Many things can be said about Paul Gagame, John Pombe Magufuli. But they have demonstrated that when the political class have their minds and hearts in the right place, then change happens almost dramatically. And I'm being hyperbolic here to use the word dramatically, but you get the, the drift of what I'm saying. So political leadership is the African problem. Look, and I'll name names here. You look at countries which can't move any iota. Look at uh, Paul Beers Cameroon. He's been in power since 1979 when I was a high school student. I'm about to retire. The country can't grow. Denise Sassok Nguesso. 37 years, I'm about to retire. He was a president when I was a high school student. The country can't grow. And I'm saying that, that this is the kind of thing that we should resolve because what the politicians do, which makes change very difficult, is to make politics based, the mobilization is on clan, mobilization is on tribe, mobilization is on corruption, mobilization is on the basis of thuggery, and that makes things very easy. So I can't agree more that one of the problems in Africa is political leadership. And I think Dr. Nagas talked about it uh, quite well in raising that question. Then the question that I think Dr. Naga, the question that you, you, you all know, that was Naga about traveling abroad. But somebody raised the question that don't I think, he didn't use so many words, but I, I'm going to be harsh on myself. Don't I think I'm too simplistic in suggesting that you open the boundaries? I'm not being simplistic. I'm saying that experience demonstrates that when you begin to open the boundaries, you actually take care of all those concerns. It is a failed state that makes the argument that if we open the boundaries, then there'll be an influx of people. If you have your instruments, if you have your security agencies, if you ensure that people have identity cards, if you have all these things that we pay taxes for, if somebody is coming from Niger, there'll be border controls. If somebody is coming from Cameroon, there'll be border controls. If you go to Europe, and Europe has, has, has its own problems, but there was a fear when the German, the Eastern Germans and Western Germans were, were uniting after the collapse of the Soviet Union, that there would be an influx of Eastern Germans in Western. What you do, the, why do people move? That is the question that we, you ask. Why does one move from, I'm using a Nigerian example. Why do I move, for example, from Abeokuta to Abuja? I move from Abeokuta to Abuja because Primarily, I think there are better opportunities in Abuja. Suppose those opportunities were available in Abokuta. I would think twice because it's better to be at home. Why do I move from Onitsha to Kaduna? Because I think that the opportunities in Kaduna, but if it were otherwise, I would not move. So one of the things that we must do is to ensure that those opportunities are available. And if I'm moving to another place, is simply to enhance it. Take, for example, and I'll give an example of the Americans, McDonald's. McDonald's could possibly survive on the population of the United States of America, but because they are comfortable at home, they are now able to expand, expand their tentacles throughout the world. So Africa must create an environment where people do not are not incentivized to be economic migrants at a very basic level. They are economic migrants for purposes of enhancing their economic circumstances. And I think that that argument, let me give you an example, for example. Do you know that the women's hair industry, the wig, is 34 billion United States dollars, and I'm being conservative. That is bigger than the GDP of Benin, Togo, Gabon combined, wigs only. The wine industry, cocoa industry, 
So if you look at all those things, last year Kenya was importing maize from Brazil and there is a glut of maize in Malawi. There is a glut of maize. We, as I speak to you in my rural village where we have fish, it's a fishing community. We are eating fish from China and eggs from China. Did our chicken stop growing, <laughs> laying eggs? It's just that we are disorganized. We are importing fish food from Brazil to be used on Lake Victoria, which I hope will be renamed soon. So you, you, you discover that these things, look at your own, the Yamasukru that you referred to. We say we opened the airspace. For whom have we opened? We have opened for Qatar Airline. We have opened for United Emirates. There is no Nigerian airline to enjoy that. Kenya Airways has recorded today the highest loss ever in the history of corporate Kenya at 36 billion United States, Kenya Airways. If we open the skies, it should be for Air Nigeria, Air Peace, should be Namibian airline. And these little airlines that we are in the business of creating are completely useless. Let's have one airline. And if we want to have flags on the tail of these, we can have one that is a national carrier and let private, regulated private sector be in these businesses and we enable them. So I think that uh, uh, that movement does not scare me. And I hear you when you say now Boko Haram, you, right now you find, and I'm, I'm doing a case on behalf of a, of a body in Sudan, they have arrested people who are fighting in Darfur, in the Sudan, who are citizens of Niger. And why? Because they are being recruited to be paid $500 because there are no opportunities. So let us not confuse the symptoms for the cause of the problem. Some of these fellows, they are, they are soldiers of fortune. They are simply going into those things because that is the quickest way to send money to, you, to home and also to have a source of livelihood. Somebody told me something that, 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 I, that I thought was very useful. He said, aspiration without hope leads to you acquiring the Kalashnikov. Aspiration with hope makes you look for the pen. We have created a people who have aspiration without hope and their next salvation is the Kalash Nikov or the AK-47. We must create people who have hope and aspiration and hope, and then we give them the pen because the open will open doors. The last question, and I'm assuming that I've not uh, lost this related to that one is the silencing of the gun. Remember last year was the year of the silencing of the gun. We said that all guns would be silenced in the continent of Africa. As I speak, you Tigre, the you know, the, or Kenya and the and the Somalia are struggling about their maritime boundary. In Darfur, in West Nile, in Nuba Mountains, people are fighting. In the Sahelian region, you know better than I, in Northern Mozambique, in Amazonia. And I think that we must silence the guns if Africa is to move in the right, the right direction. The very last question is the very first that am I related to Patrice Emery Lumumba? Our own relationship is because we are Africans. And if you are readers of the Bible, and, and even the Muslims in our midst will remember this because the prophet Elia is a common prophet to both Christians and Muslims. The day before he went to heaven, he took his cloak and put it on the shoulder of another prophet called Elisha. Perhaps in a unique way, the spirit of Lumumba does have a space in my thinking. And I think that that is what history does, that you find people with good ideas. They are taken rather quickly in their lives and these ideas are immortalized and it's the duty of some of us, including you and me, to give the oxygen of life to some of these activities. In my own way, I, I, I run a foundation. We are present in 38 African countries so that what we say is wedded with what we are trying to do. We may fail, but we fail not for want of effort. It is well-meaning effort. And when we fail, we rise and rise again. And I think that is the challenge that we find. So people like Patrice Emery Lumumba, people like uh, Kwame Nkrumah, people like, uh, uh, people like 
Namdia Zikiwe, you know, when I now read some of these fellows, I read people like Namdi, I read people like Obafemi Awolo, those fellows who are, who are enlightened. I'm mentioning them because this is a Nigerian audience. Many here, you here have read, but many young people, and I remember the young person asking, why are people moving outside of the continent? They are moving outside of the continent because they are of no opportunities. And I must remind them, the Germans were bombed to the ground in 1945. The Japanese were bombed to the ground in 1945. The Koreans were a backwater country a few years ago. Malaysia was a backwater country. Singapore was a backwater country. So this excuse that we were colonized is not available to us. It has been demonstrated that when you have enlightened political leadership, you can change your circumstances dramatically and is not only outside of the continent. Rwanda was, the obituary of Rwanda had been written in the year 1994. When I go to Rwanda today, you can buy a season ticket for public transportation in Kigali. You can go to Rwanda today and they are using robots to deliver medicine in rural Rwanda. You go to Rwanda today, every home has been given a cow for milk. Rwanda, not, not, not Singapore, here yeah, in Africa, Rwanda, whose economy, the GDP of Rwanda is no more than 17,000 United States dollars. Nigeria is the biggest economy with a GDP of nearly $500 billion. And, and, and Rwanda perhaps is no bigger uh, than, 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 than the state of, uh, of Anambra. So it can be done. So the younger people were here and, and COVID has done something that is, is every, every cloud has a silver lining. During this period, we could not travel. And because we could not travel, we make do with what we have. I hope that this will be our moment of introspection. I hope as I conclude that what I saw with the, the University of Edo, what you are doing there should not what you are doing is too good to be confined in your in your state. It's too good to be confined in Nigeria. We want you to we want you to make noise about it. We want you to make I this forget about this, forget this nonsense of, uh, of 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 Nobel Prize. I want to hear that a prize of science has been created by the University of Edo, which is a Pan African prize created. The council of the university, the senate of the university surprise us with something that will open the eyes of Africa, constitute some of us into your ambassadors to make noise across the continent, organize noise so that we create these things. It can be done. And that will be your greatest claim to fame. That is all I wish to conclude with. And God may bless you. Thank you very much, Professor Lumumba. Um, no dull moment. And if we, if you tempt us the way you are tempting us, this lecture will be on to tomorrow. But we need to appreciate you and to move on to another interlude, which will be um, the Founders Day sequence. You see what we have done uh, from first Founders Day till date, and then we would, we would begin to take goodwill messages. Uzare, formerly a Edo University Yamo, was founded on the premise of providing quality education that conforms with globally acceptable standard. This vision of the founding fathers towards building a world-class university has indeed been sustained as the institution has conquered the academic space, especially with the deployment of modern technological tools for learning. Hence the need to set aside a day to celebrate excellence and propagate the success story of the citadel of learning. Here are the signs and sounds of the Founders' Day celebrations in their sequence. It was pomp and pageantry at the maiden edition of the program, where the state governor, Gordon Obaseki, who was represented by his deputy, urged students to take advantage of the available resources in the university to realize their said goals. The 
the chairman, governing council of the university, Professor Patu Tomi, was represented by Emeritus Professor Thomas Audu, while former Edo State Governor Comrade Adam Sushomole was also in attendance. Guest speakers at the event included Professor Friday Okonofua, Vice Chancellor, University of Medical Sciences, Undo, who spoke on challenges in pioneering a new university in a resource constrained setting, while Augustine Alege, SAN, former president, Nigerian Bar Association, spoke on strengthening democracy in Nigeria, the role of the judiciary. The Vice Chancellor, Engineer Professor Emmanuel Aluyo, who was impressed with the growth of the university, reiterated management's position to reward excellence. And this was followed by goodwill messages. The second Founders Day celebration came with more fulfilling moments as the state governor, represented by his deputy, inaugurated ultra-modern facilities and state-of-the-art equipment. The Minister for Education, Malam Adamu Adamu, represented, and the President, National Political Science Association, who is also the Chairman, Kogi State Local Government Service Commission, delivered lectures titled, Restructuring the Nigerian Tertiary Education System to Addressing the 21st Century Funding Challenges and Political Engineering and Dynamics of Change, the Nigerian experience, respectively. The Vice Chancellor was elated by the fact that the university has recorded unprecedented milestones within a short space of time. The university is richly equipped with modern scientific teaching equipment and facilities. The Do University Yamo is the first and only medical training institution with an anatomical table in Nigeria. The physical presence of Governor Godwin Obaseki at the Ted Founders Day was a moral booster for the university as the visitor maintained government's position to support the university to achieve world-class status. We want to create a university of global standards, a high-quality university that ranks Vice Minister for Water Resources, Engineer Suleiman Hussein Adamu, who was represented by the Managing Director, Bini Owena River Basin Authority, gave lecture on water sanitation and hygiene for sustainable development. Professor Edi Eragbe of the University of Benin spoke on democracy and meeting the needs of Nigerian citizens. The Vice Chancellor and Chairman Governing Council of the University commended the state government for creating the enabling environment for the university to soar. The fourth Founders Day, which was rescheduled due to the COVID-19 pandemic, held virtually with Edo State Governor and other stakeholders in attendance. The guest lecturer, chief of the air staff, expressed confidence that the Nigerian Air Force was capable of solving the insecurity challenges currently faced by the country. We are hoping that with what we are doing in terms of research and development with tertiary institutions, we'll establish a bridge with the private sector. The things that we have done, like the like the UAB now, we do not have the resources to continue producing UAVs in large numbers. It is the private sector that needs to come in, take a look at what we have done and say, look, this makes sense for us to invest in. There were goodwill messages on the university for being exceptional, especially with regards to the completion of its academic curriculum in the heat of the lockdown. Thank you very much. We have just taken you through the series of Founder Day lectures. Now it's time for goodwill messages. And just as we did, we would uh, ask you to uh, indicate by show of hand, not from the audience, but those who have already told us that they want to give goodwill messages. We'd like to begin with the head of service of the Edo State Civil Service, Barrister Anthony Okubawa, to speak to us giving his goodwill message. 
Pastor Kumbawa, please. Uh, thank you very, very much. Um, hello. Hello. Yes, we, we have you on. Okay, thank you very much, sir. I, I like to thank um, very sincerely the Vice Chancellor and uh, members of Council of um, our beloved university for the opportunity that you've given to everyone on this call to be part of this very beautiful lecture. Uh, as I said in the, in the course of uh, the comments, uh, you know, uh, after the presentation by the erudite professor, uh, some of us, uh, particularly myself, uh, have not had any opportunity of listening directly uh, to the learned prof, who is uh, one of the best minds in this part of, um, of the world. Uh, today, we had that opportunity. And uh, personally, I consider myself blessed uh, to have uh, been on this call. Uh, I, want to thank, I want to thank you, uh, 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 Vice Chancellor, uh, for this opportunity that you've given. And on behalf of the entire public service of Edo State, I want to appreciate the work that you are doing in the university, you and your team, and I want to urge you to continue to do uh, your best. Uh, you know very well that the government of Edo State is committed to ensuring that education is given the very best shot and is uh, making every effort uh, to ensure that that's actualized. Uh, the governor of Edo State believes that if you give the people education, you give them everything. Um, and so I want to thank you for joining Mr. Governor in ensuring that Edo is made great again through the efforts that you're making. Once again, I want to thank you and God bless you, sir. Thank you. Secretary of the Committee of Vice Chancellors, Professor Ochefu, to give his goodwill message. Professor Ochefu, please. He has just left for an important assignment. At this point, we are going straight to our visitor, the governor of Edo State, His Excellency, Mr. Godwin Togegase Obaseki, to speak to this gathering. Mr. Governor, sir. You have the floor. Thank you. Thank you very, very much. The Chancellor of Edo University, Zaire, Dr. Derebi Abakojuola, the Chairman of the Occasion, Justice Samoseji. My Lord, I was uh, looking out for you yesterday in Abuja, but I thank you very much for accepting to chair this event. Our special guest and speaker, the legendary, the now legendary Professor P.L.O. Lubumba, the Vice Chancellor of the our University, Professor Aluyo. Let me recognize and acknowledge all distinguished and eminent scholars and invitees to this year's uh, this year's um, founders the uh, founders day lecture and also to commend I, the university, I do University of Zaire for organizing the fifth Founders Day lecture against the odds of a rampaging and ravaging impact of the coronavirus pandemic, which has tossed us all into a new normal. It is gratifying that the university has been able to respond to the current realities by hosting this Founders Day event virtually. I want to specifically thank our Vice Chancellor, Professor Emmanuel Aluyo, for his leadership, foresight, and innovation. This is what universities are supposed to be about. By their very nature, universities are supposed to be innovative and rise above the circumstances of the era and point the way forward for the rest of society. I appreciate the chairman of 
today, Honorable Justice of the Supreme Court, His Lordship Justice Seji, for taking time from his very busy judicial itinerary to honor this event. I know that he takes education very seriously because education is important to our society or any other society for that matter. Unfortunately, in many circles, education has not been given the type of attention it deserves. It is therefore heartwarming that the Honorable Justice has given himself to, this, to the course of education, and we hope that this will inspire others to, un, to undertake to commit to education and also inspire our younger ones. The reputation of our lecturer of today, Professor P. L. O. Lumumba, precedes him as a modern African thinker, and he showed it clearly in his elucidation this morning. And he has now been recognized as one of those rare breeds in the realm of African thoughts that has a unique way to engage the challenges confronting our continent. I believe that Professor Lubumba has done justice to the topic of today, which is modern economic slavery of African states, the way forward. Extrain the particular and peculiar challenges bedeviling the continent and how neo-colonial tendencies persist and our skewed economic relationships continue to undermine Africa's development and fuel the surge of modern day slavery. There is no denying the need to rethink the current economic structures and emplace new systems that serve the interests of Africans that, like, that will liberate their economies and make our different countries self-sufficient. It is this thinking that has informed the drive by the Edo State government under my leadership to re-articulate the basis of our economy so that we could build local capacity for industrialization and honestly approach the issues of illegal and irregular migration, human trafficking, and modern day slavery which bedeviled our state. My government's efforts have yielded appreciable success, if we may say so, with the support streaming in from different parts of the world to, so, so that we can continue to provide homegrown solutions and tailor our solutions to the peculiarities of our society. We have continued to strengthen our institutions to be more responsive to the changing needs of modern society. Because we believe that for Africa to get out of its current morass, we must build strong institutions and not strong godfathers. And ensure that these institutions are better equipped and prepared to respond to change and the challenges from both outside and within the continent. We believe that this sort of homegrown African-focused solutions are essential to addressing the scourge of modern economic slavery in African states, and hope that the Edo example will point the way forward for, that, for other countries and subnationals. I want to thank you very much. I want to thank all of those who have participated in hosting this very successful Founders' Day event. Congratulations. We want to thank His Excellency, the Governor, for that goodwill message, and to thank him for the special attention he's paying to this university. Let me inform that the lecture is in soft copy, and that those who are interested in getting the soft copy can reach us via the university email or website, and the soft copy will be available to them. Let me repeat that. Those who are interested in the soft copy of the lecture by Professor Lumumba can have free access to that lecture only when they reach us through this university 
website, pro at edouniversity.edu.ng. I take it again, pro at edouniversity.edu.ng. If you send a request to this address, we will ensure that you get a soft copy. Ladies and gentlemen, we are about to take the last spotlight on Edo University. It's very brief, and after that, we will go on to the vote of thanks. But just before then, let me say to you that Edo University is growing from leaps to leaps, growing from strength to strength. Tomorrow, this university will also play host to another. in Africa and in the world. Thank you very much. Well, we will take the brief interlude and then we'll go. Edo University Iyamu, a game changer in academics in Nigeria. Edo University Iyamu, located along kilometer 7 Aoki Abuja Road, in the serene environment of Iyamu Ozare in Edo State, was established by the Edo State government and was given recognition by the NUC as the 41st state-owned university in Nigeria in 2016. Owned by the Edo State government, the university is dedicated to finding solutions to critical socio-political and economic challenges and to preparing students for leadership in a dynamic world. The desire of Edo State government for quality education is demonstrated in our investment in world-class facilities in the university. This is why the university can boast of modern and advanced technological tools that are not easily available in our country according to the testimonies of different personalities, dignitaries and parents who have visited the university recently. Our goal is to make this university a world-class university, a global university, a university that can compare with anyone outside of this country. So our benchmark is not Nigeria, it's the world. Um, I want that the next rankings we will see this university being ranked among the best universities on the continent before you know we go into on to the next level. We found that 70% of the Ivy League universities use Canvas learning management system. Going by global ranking, the 10 best universities in the world, six use Canvas learning management system. We then decided that if our standards, or if where we want to be, is where those universities are, then we should put Canvas learning management system in place for our students and that's what we have done uh, we have taken a, a guided tour around the campus and um, uh, the facilities are impressive and they are world, world uh, class our projections are that in the not too distant future the university will be a reference point for tertiary education in nigeria uh, we just did a tour of uh, the university here more and uh, we've seen a lot of beautiful things, awesome things. You know, I'm very, very proud to be an Edo man today. Uh, I was just discussing with the VC. Now I know why all our courses here are accredited so quickly. You know, I've been to universities both in Nigeria and abroad. I'm happy to tell you that what, I, what I've seen here today is the best I've ever seen. And uh, I'm highly impressed. I want Which is globally acknowledged as the fastest growing elements with more than 8 million users. Hence, Mr. Vice Chancellor, you and your management have placed the trail by this singular act. With the increased presence of the new university on a worldwide level, the state is set for a improved ranking of the university on national and global meetings. We are now working on nationally New University without doubt, but it's a uni university with great 
um, a great potential. But beyond the potential, it's a un university that has great ideas. It's easy to say that it's a young investor, but it is taking on the kind of responsibility that even the older investors are not able to. We're using simulation technology to train students for achieving the competencies required. Which a Dose University is well suited, well equipped, well, both with facilities and human beings to train engineers. I have to be totally honest. I've been to a few universities in Nigeria. There's this has got to be the most modern university. At the size scale of the universities, it's very, very big. The facilities are fantastic and beautiful football pitch. Uh, proceedings today and before we wind down formally we'd like to invite the chairman of the university ceremonials committee who is also the dean of the faculty of law dr mrs fu masajua to give the vote of thanks Permits me to stand on a protocol established by the Vice Chancellor of Engineer, Professor Emmanuel Aluyo. To this end, I wish to express our sincere thanks to His Excellency Godwin Noyase Obaseki, the Executive Governor of Edo State and visitor to the University, Edo State University, Zairo. I also wish to thank most respectfully Honorable Justice Eddie Gin, the Chief Judge of Edo State, uh, Dr. Deremi Makanjola, the, Vice, the Chancellor of Edo State University, Uzaroe. Thank you very much, sir, for being here. Honorable Justice Samuel Chukwudume Biosegi, Justice of the Supreme Court of Nigeria, Chairman of the Occasion. Thank you, sir, for honoring our invitation at a very short notice. We appreciate your presence at today's event. We appreciate the presence of the head of service, Edo State, Mr. Antonio Kungowa, and permanent secretary, Minister of Education, Mrs. Stella Marie Simasen. Thank you, Madam, for coming to grace our invitation to the fifth Founders Day ceremony lecture. We thank very sincerely and appreciatively the great Pan Africanist, the guest speaker of the fifth Founders Day at Edo State University, Uzari, Professor Pielo Lumumba a distinguished advocate of the High Court of Kenya and Tagayika for giving an excellent coverage of his speech. His passion for Africa is legendary. May Africa rise to be a continent of our dreams in your lifetime, sir. God bless you, we appreciate you, sir. So to our friends of the university, in particular, uh, thanks to the Secretary General of Association of Vice Chancellors of Nigeria, Professor Yakub Ochefu and Vice Chancellors of Sister University, we thank you for your presence. We thank you for your time, for the great time you spent with us at today's event. I also wish to express uh, my gratitude and the gratitude of uh, their university uh, to the Vice Chancellor and members of his management team, sir. Uh, the Provost Deans, HODs, Directors of the various academic research centers, staff, and our dear students. To you all, we say thank you. We look forward to welcoming you to the sixth edition of the Distinguished Lecture Series of the Founders of this great university. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Chairman of the Seminars Committee. We have come to the end of this lecture, but just to reiterate the point that was made earlier, that at those state universities I read, has commenced admissions into postgraduate programs. 
And when you visit the website, you will see the programs that are up for admissions into the postgraduate program. Please feel free to come here and share the Waterlands environment and the Waterlands knowledge industry that this university is preparing. We want to thank everybody. We will look forward to seeing you again at yet another event of our world class universities. At this point, I invite you to rise as we take the university anthem and then the national anthem thereafter. Thank you. come to an end, but we'll have a couple of videos showing you what's going on in the university. Thank you and God bless you. Welcome to Edo State University Ozare, formerly known as Edo University Iyamo. History was made on March 23, 2016, in the educational sector of Edo State, as the National Universities Commission (NUC) approved the establishment of this university. Since the establishment of this university in 2016, the university has made landmark achievement in various areas. The first in West African subregion to acquire anatomy table, a 3G medical tool that aid in the study of human anatomy. The university also has well-equipped laboratories for teaching and research with state-of-the-art equipment such as thermocycla, eye performance liquid chromatography, atomic absorption spectrophotometer, Treman CG mannequins tissue processor among others you will know more about our facilities as we visit provost college of medical sciences and deans of various faculties 
Here we are in the office of the Provost, College of Medical Sciences. The college consists of three faculties. The faculty of basic clinical is one of the strongest in the country because we have the 4D and 3G mannequins that are used in skill acquisition for our students. Our curriculum is, uh, is the curriculum we refer to as the integrated uh, medical curriculum. This curriculum starts integration of teaching and skill acquisition right from level 200. When the students, when I well reach 200 levels, this curriculum starts integrating the basic clinicals and thereafter the clinicals. In our program, we use the most technologically advanced method of learning, which is internationally accepted. For example, we use the outcome-based method of learning. What is this outcome-based method of learning? We, it is not, we are not just satisfied to go into the class and teach our students. We are more concerned with what the student is able to obtain, the knowledge the student is able to obtain from the lecturer. Uh, well, the uh, Faculty of Law, we took off uh, 2017. In terms of uh, teaching and learning, our students' population are growing steadily, uh, session after session, and that's pointed to the fact that uh, uh, people are beginning to see the uniqueness of the training of new set of lawyers here in Edo University. Here, with the, by the special guest of God and with the present uh, management on board, recruitment is based on merit. And uh, for information, it will, interest, it will interest you to note that every lecturer in this university, so technologies, has something to offer. And here, we don't hold knowledge. Here, we give the key to the student. We have seven departments. We have very hardworking, dedicated, and brilliant lecturers. Students are very much happy with how they are tutored and lectured. And in the faculty, excel moral uh, education or orientation to our students. The faculty is proud of having staff that have traveled abroad and attend conferences and some of them have won grants. We welcome you to the university. University have top-notch facilities. Um, anatomy has the very unique teaching aid equipment called the Anatomage. And the laboratories are well fitted with high-tech equipment to make learning and teaching easy. The consultants from these departments cover clinics and that place where our students also benefit from clinical exposure. Of course, training and teaching and research are all part of what we do in the departments. And uh, lecturers and the teachers are involved in a lot of developmental activities, staff development, conferences, workshops, both locally and internationally. The faculty is well equipped. As you can see, we're in the medical surgical nursing lab of one out of the three laboratories that we have for nursing. We have this general nursing lab. The next laboratory is the maternal and child health care lab. And we also have the public health nursing lab. They are large enough that each of them can take at least 50 students at a time. And we have cubicles where we have our models for demonstration, and we also have various equipment that we use in the training of our students. The programs include a postgraduate diploma, a master's degree in accounting, postgraduate master's degree, master of science, and doctor of philosophy in biochemistry, a postgraduate diploma, master of science, and doctor of philosophy in computer science. Um, Postgraduate Diploma, Master of Science, Doctor of Philosophy in Economics, Master of Art, and Doctor of Philosophy in History and International Studies, and uh, Postgraduate Diploma, Master of Science, Doctor of Philosophy in Microbiology, and last but not the least, 
uh, Master of Science and uh, Doctor of Philosophy in Political Science and Public uh, Administration. So the application form is available on our website. So candidates can log in through our website and go straight for uh, to postgraduate admission. Wow, our story does not end here. Let's walk through the administrative building, Muhammad Buhari Administrative Complex. This is how we assess the third and fourth floor of this building. More interesting stories to tell. Wait a minute. This is Aliku Dangote Auditorium. This is our classroom. They are all temperature control classrooms with functional multimedia facilities. Come with me to the sport arena. This is our Olympic sized football stadium. Now let's hear from our students. Right, my name is Israel Jogbo. I'm a 300 level middle of science student and uh, I love Edo State University Uzare because the teaching standard here is wonderful. The way the lecturers relate to their students and everything is just so wonderful. My name is Dairo Hassan Fatima, 200 level nursing department. What I like about Edo State University Uzairu is they have good facilities and they have good lecturers and they have a very good, good, good surroundings. I am sure you like what you have seen. Thank you and remain blessed. University Iyamu, a game changer in academics in Nigeria. Edo University Iyamu, located along kilometer 7 Aochi Abuja Road, in the serene environment of Iyamu Ozare in Edo State, was established by the Edo State government and was given recognition by the NUC as the 41st state-owned university in Nigeria in 2016. Owned by the Edo State government, the university is dedicated to finding solutions to critical socio-political and economic challenges and to preparing students for leadership in a dynamic world. The desire of a state government for quality education is demonstrated in our investment in world-class facilities in the university. This is why the university can boast of modern and advanced technological tools that are not easily available in our country according to the testimonies of different personalities, dignitaries and parents who have visited the university recently. Our goal is to make this university a world-class university a global university, a university that can compare with anyone outside of this country. So our benchmark is not Nigeria, it's the world. Um, I want that the next rankings, we will see this university being ranked among the best universities on the continent before you know we go into on to the next level. We found that 70% of the Ivy League universities use Canvas learning management system. Going by global ranking, the 10 best universities in the world, six use Canvas Learning Management System. We then decided that if our standards, or if where we want to be, is where those universities are, then we should put Canvas Learning Management System in place for our students. And that's what we have done. Uh, we have taken a, a guided tour around the campus and um, the facilities are impressive and they are world, world uh, class. Our projections are that in the not too distant future, the university will be a reference point for tertiary education in Nigeria. Uh, we just did a tour of uh, the University of Yamo and uh, we've seen a lot of beautiful things, awesome things. You know, I'm very, very proud to be an Edo man today. Uh, I was just discussing with the VC. Now I know why all our courses here are accredited so quickly. You know, I've been to universities both in Nigeria and abroad. I'm happy to tell you that what, I, what I've seen here today is the best I've ever seen. And uh, I'm highly impressed. I want Which is globally acknowledged as the fastest growing elements with more than
union investor without doubt, but it's a union investor with great, um, a great potential. But beyond the potential, it's a union investor that has great ideas. It's easy to say that it's a young investor, but it is taking on the kind of responsibility that even the older investors are not able to. We're using simulation technology to train students for achieving the competencies required which Edo's University is well suited, well equipped, well, both with facilities and human beings to train engineers. I have to be totally honest, I've been to a few universities in Nigeria, there's this it's got to be the most modern university. At the size scale of the universities, it's very, very big. The facilities are fantastic and a beautiful football pitch. Edo State University Uzare, formerly Edo University Yamo, was founded on the premise of providing quality education that conforms with globally acceptable standard. This vision of the founding fathers towards building a world-class university has indeed been sustained as the institution has conquered the academic space, especially with the deployment of modern technological tools for learning. Hence the need to set aside a day to celebrate excellence and propagate the success story of the citadel of learning. Here are the signs and sounds of the Founders' Day celebrations in their sequence. It was pomp and pageantry at the maiden edition of the program, where the state governor, Gordon Obaseki, who was represented by his deputy, urged students to take advantage of the available resources in the university to realize their said goals. The chairman, governing council of the university, Professor Pat Utomi, was represented by Emeritus Professor Thomas Audu, while former Edo State Governor Comrade Adam Sushomole was also in attendance. Guest speakers at the event included Professor Friday Okunofua, Vice Chancellor, University of Medical Sciences, Undo, who spoke on challenges in pioneering a new university in a resource constrained setting, while Augustine Alege, SAN, former president, Nigerian Bar Association, spoke on strengthening democracy in Nigeria, the role of the judiciary. The vice chancellor, engineer Professor Emmanuel Aluyo, who was impressed with the growth of the university, reiterated management's position to reward excellence. And this was followed by goodwill messages. The second Founders' Day celebration came with more fulfilling moments as the state governor, represented by his deputy, inaugurated ultra-modern facilities and state-of-the-art equipment. The Minister for Education, Malam Adamu Adamu, represented, and the President, National Political Science Association, who is also the chairman, Kogi State Local Government Service Commission, delivered lectures titled Restructuring the Nigerian Tertiary Education System to Addressing the 21st Century Funding Challenges and Political Engineering and Dynamics of Change, the Nigerian Experience, respectively. The Vice Chancellor was elated by the fact that the university has recorded unprecedented milestones within a short space of time. The University Yambo is richly equipped with modern scientific teaching equipment and facilities. The Do University Yambo is the first and only medical training institution with an anatomical table in Nigeria. The physical presence of Governor Godwin Obaseki at the third Founders Day was a moral booster for the university as the visitor maintained government's position to support the university to achieve world-class status. We wanted to create a university of global standards, a high-quality university that ranked Wise Minister for Water Resources, Engineer Suleiman Hussein Adamu, who was represented by the Managing Director, Bini Owena River Basin Authority, gave lecture on water sanitation and hygiene for sustainable development. 
Professor Edi Eragbe of the University of Benin spoke on democracy and meeting the needs of Nigerian citizens. The Vice Chancellor and Chairman Governing Council of the University commended the state government for creating the enabling environment for the university to soar. The fourth Founders Day, which was rescheduled due to the COVID-19 pandemic, held virtually with Edo State Governor and other stakeholders in attendance. The guest lecturer, Chief of the Air Staff, expressed confidence that the Nigerian Air Force was capable of solving the insecurity challenges currently faced by the country. We are hoping that with what we are doing in terms of research and development of tertiary institutions, we'll establish a bridge with the private sector. The things that we have done, like the, like the UAV now, we do not have the resources to continue producing UAVs in large numbers. It is the private sector that needs to come in, take a look at what we have done, and say, look, this makes sense for us to invest in. There were goodwill messages on the university for being exceptional, especially with regards to the completion of its academic curriculum in the heat of the lockdown. With the establishment of a Doe University, Yamo, on the 23rd of March 2016, Little did people know that with its bet as the 41st state-owned university in Nigeria, the world is set to be exposed to wonderful things in the medical landscape that may not be readily available within the immediate environment. Breaking new grounds may well be the best strategy evolved by the dynamic managers of the institution under the leadership of indefatigable Vice-Chancellor, Engineer Professor Emmanuel Aluyo, to realize the set goal as the university became the first in Nigeria and second in the whole of West Africa to possess an anatomage, a state-of-the-art modern equipment used in the training of medical students. Apart from teaching anatomy, I can teach a lot of other things from it. I come here, I can teach histology from here. I can teach angiology from here. I can teach comparative anatomy from here. I can teach uh, pathology from here. The intention of the college is to ensure that we contribute significantly to the healthcare delivery and administration, and at the same time, show the way in ensuring that we have doctors or graduates who would demonstrate significant competencies that are transferable from one country to the other and then globally. We have also utilized a significant enhancement of um, technology into our programs. So a good number of times you come around, you'll find that um, we have things that will demonstrate anatomy, a virtual dissection platform for anatomy, in three or four D platforms and with significant clinical pathology correlations. Edo University Medical School is an expression of bravery, courage. Its focus is so far reaching. It's putting a lot of emphasis on good training, on laying very good foundation. That's not only in words but also in deed. And by the kind of investment they have made, both human and material, it's clear that they have focused on the future. The kind of things they have is exactly where the training of medical students is that is headed. From where this university has come, it has put it has it has it has made it competitive for the older universities because it's really focused on the future and um, it's a case of it's put its money where its mouth is. Just three years down the line the university, which is now a center of international attraction, with its array of sophisticated medical training equipment, such as power laboratory, thermocycler, tissue processor, refrigerated centrifuge, high-performance liquid chromatography, atomic absorption spectrophotometer, digitally enhanced dissection laboratory, has broken more grounds with the acquisition 
of low and high fidelity mannequin semen 3G in the clinical skills laboratory to give first-hand knowledge to students in the medical sciences in the diagnosis of patients. Let's say for instance you want to teach asthma today and you want to teach it to your medical students. If an asthmatic doesn't come in today to the hospital, how do you teach it? The patient that you need to see, you may never see throughout your career. A mannequin like this help you to simulate conditions that you don't necessarily see. So you can really teach a lot of different things. I am so excited by what the Edo University in Yamu has done. This is the first institution that I know of where we have such an advanced training mannequin. You know, I'm very, very proud to be an Edo man today. I've been to universities both in Nigeria and abroad. I'm happy to tell you that what, I, what I've seen here today is the best I've ever seen. With the availability of a full package of the latest facilities in the field of medicine, science as well as other related courses, vis-a-vis -vis the provision of seasoned personnel to give the necessary technical know-how, students in the relevant discipline are guaranteed of mastering the art of medical practice within the shortest period of their stay in the university. from the onset. 
So that for me is worthy of both. And also the facility, like every other Nigerian facility, maintenance is a problem. But I'm saying that facilities are being maintained. And for me, elsewhere outside the country is not an issue. But in Nigeria, it's an issue because we have that culture of having to commission new things. And when you come the next year, they are dilapidated. I'm not seeing the dilapidated structure, and I'm not seeing anyone having that sign of dilapidated. So I think there are a lot of things I've seen, but this time, Yeah, for us, we want to grow basic education because when you carry them young, you are able to mold them to be the, the, the role model you want them to be at the end of the day. When they miss it at the foundation stage, no matter the technology you deploy, when they are already at the tertiary level, uh, you will only help to moderate the damage you are not able to get the best out of them. So for us as a state government, we are one of the pillars that we want to achieve in our government is to grow the foundation, which is basic education. While growing the basic education, making it a foundation, we are also making all our institutions, from primary to higher institution, to be technology based. So even the children from primary school we get to learn through tablets. That is the direction we are already moving. So education for us, beyond just reading and writing, you must also be skilled. And that is why we are reproducing and equipping and building skill-based facilities now, like the Vinny Technical College and other technical colleges that we are bringing up. And that will help to shape it our students not only to be worthy in character and learning, but also to be skilled. Your Excellency, I must say congratulations. Thank you very much. We are congratulating you because just two years in office as governor, and the university in Yamo is rated over all third best university in Nigeria by the last OER assessment carried out by the NEC. So what's your take on this? Yeah, that shows pragmatic leadership and shows focus. Shows that the Kaolea management staff know what the vision of the school is and they are going in from year in, year out. And that is why I, I charge them not to relax on that that they've started. And because this university has a vision from the bond set and that vision must be good. And I'm seeing them growing it already. And also, beyond the management and staff, the students. The students also have to take advantage of it because not too many universities like this exist in this country. So, not only take advantage of the quality of management staff and lecturers that you have, but the quality of facility that we also have here, which is second to none. You go to Harvard, that you, 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 some of the facilities you get here now to show that it is just now Harvard is making orders for them. So that means what you can get in Harvard or Oxford, you can get it here. That is the vision. And that means education tourism is returning back to, to this country. And this university is one of those best sitters that every other university wants to learn from. The National University Commission is already sending people here to see what is in Yamu and replicate that in their various universities. So for me, I want to say kudos to the management staff and the students that are also taking advantage of it. Because if the students are not taking advantage of it, by now we'll be hearing negative things. Now we are not hearing that it means that we also have dedicated students that are ready to learn, they are ready to be role model. So I, I think I'm excited and we are taught now, but with what I'm saying, very soon, the number one is not far from this university. Yeah, the prospect is to make it a center of excellence in all ramifications, in all fields. And at the end of the day, we will not be competing at national level 
2016, but it's already asserting itself as a leader in the use of technology in meeting the demands of modern tertiary education. 